Valor Margolis, everybody. Hype Swatch back again. Sorry for the delay. <laughs> oh, man, oh, man. Uh, we are so happy to be back with you guys uh, for this month's uh, epic A Song of Ice and Fire reread. And today we are going to be doing the A Dance with Dragons epilogue. And we actually have a special guest in the house today, and her name is Gray Area. Gray, why don't you talk to the people? Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for all the members of the Hypes Watch for having me on your channel. I'm honored to be here to do this reread with you guys. Thanks for having me. No doubt, no doubt. Uh, we are so glad to have you on. And uh, sorry for the delay, but you know, Skype. Anyway, um, also, you know, returning, our returning champions, we have Lady Tinker Jasso. Why don't you talk to Hello. the people? <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's great to be back. I haven't been in a reread in some time, you know, quite a few months. So I'm really happy to be here and to do this chapter with you guys. And the one, the only, John the Kraken Wit. It's finally back. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Um, yeah, it's it's great to be back, um, and I'm I'm here with my people, my favorite people, to discuss these kind of things. And uh, thank you, everybody in the chat room that's watching, and thank you also, everyone that will watch this in the future. I'm excited. Let's go. And of course, our usual suspects, starting with uh, Mr. JB, Big Game James. The show. Hello. That's it. Oh god damn it, man. Seriously. <laughs> uh Sir L T Giles, the Leoless Knight in the realm. What's up everybody? I'm happy that my chapter got voted back to back. Let's make it three or next month let's make it a three P. That's it. <laughs> Uh, we can't we can't do that or else we're gonna have to pay Phil Jackson royalties. Hey, what if I nominate that chapter you guys want? Then they'll vote it. No, Actually, Pat Riley. Oh. <laughs> well, last but certainly not least, Jerry the Targaryen. I hate everything that is Game of Thrones steamboat. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, last week we, we you know we came down to the conclusion that John got what he deserved. Will we be saying the same this week? Glad you all tuned in to find out. Let's get this show on the road. Okay, all right. So, this chapter starts off uh, a little different than most chapters because uh, the way that it's set up, we have Lord Red Ronnet Connington in the throne room in the King's Landing Red Keep, and you've got Kevin Lannister in the small council. And they're kind of grilling him about the news that his uncle has taken over Griffin's roofs. And a uh, small side note, um, uh, John Connington is actually not Red Ronnet's uncle. He's his cousin. I don't know why he calls him uncle. Possibly a um, oversight by George. He, he has made, you know, a couple faux pas in his books here and there. Oh, and if you're wondering how come you can only... And play cousins. Yeah, if you're wondering how uh, you can only see, like, four of us when there's seven of us on the panel, again, Skype. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so, Red Ronnet is professing his loyalty to Tommen and uh, the Lannister cause, and Mace Tyrell, who is now sitting on... A hand of the king throne that he got carved for himself, uh, looking like a complete buffoon, is uh, saying, "Nope, you know, well, you don't, we don't trust you," and decides to have uh, Ronit locked in his cell and decides to send uh, his the the men that were sent to escort him to the Red Keep. Uh, he was like, hey, you know what? We should send those well, guys to the Night's Watch. <laughs> he's in a cell. He's in, like, just a room. Like, uh, I mean, they're not letting him out, but it's just a, you know, room. They're not, like, actually throwing him in prison or anything. I mean, well, th look, the point is he's basically a prisoner. He, basically. It's, it's not like they're going to be like, hey, well, 
hey, uh, you know what? Uh, yeah, we're kind of, we, we know that your loyalties are kind of questionable in our eyes, but, uh, you know, have free reign. Just take a yeah. precaution. Yeah. Um, um, so, all right, uh, any thoughts on this uh, <clears throat> opening section of this chapter? Because, uh, you know, real quick, um, in the very opening st- section, it's hard to tell whose perspective this is from. Uh, basically, until until uh, Red Ronnet actually gets dismissed. It's like that with all of George's chat, like feel um, epilogue in uh, prologue chapters. You never know who's because they're not like a POV character, like a normal POV. No, but um, I know it is confusing. But the but what I'm saying is the way that it kind of seemed to me with this one is uh is almost as though um uh like it could have been Red Ronnet or it could have been Kevin Lannister. It didn't necessarily could have been Mace Tyrell. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and and, and if you think about the Varamir Six Skins chapter yeah, Varamir wasn't a point of view character before, but you definitely knew from the beginning that it was Varamir Six Skins chapter. Mm-hmm. You didn't think I think that's the only one that's actually easy. But uh, like, I, I think just really all I have to say about this is I think that George is trying to give us a glimpse of what Je- like he's bringing this kid guy in to look to look and act like what John Connington was back in the day. So he's kind of giving us a glimpse of what John Connington. Uh, would have been like when he was, uh, you know, trying to handle Robert's Rebellion. And I think that's really all that's to say too much about uh, the, red, the, the Red Rooster here. <laughs> red Rooster. Oh, man. Hey, anybody else with thoughts on this? Well, I mean, ex- uh, or, go, ahead. go ahead. Not exactly that, but I think the, like, what he said about um, mm-hmm. Red Ron, it kind of showing like what John Cuttington would have been like the chapter as a whole I think shows how good of a leader Kevin would have been Kevin Lannister I think he would have been a good ruler agree well actually I I actually wrote that in my notes was uh through Kevin's thoughts we can see he is you know intelligent and a shrewd person um but I'm assuming we're going to talk about that as a whole later but um just the beginning parts it's interesting that it's you know snowing in King's Landing um, and I think when you were asking about, you know, that maybe, may, I don't know, necessarily know that if it was a screw up about the whole Red Ronnet and, you know, uh, calling John his uncle thing, you know, it's kind of, maybe it's one of those things where even though someone is like your second cousin, um, but like, let's say there's a big age difference or, you know, maybe it's kind of like maybe more of like a term of endearment or like, you know, kind of like a respect thing, you know, just calling someone your uncle. Cause like, they're like, uh, my girlfriend is like family friends where she says, you know, someone older, like they call it like, a, you know, like an uncle or something. Maybe it's something or, like that. Well, I mean, uh, Connington's a generation ahead. So their fathers might've been cousins and that's why he just says, well, uncle, whatever. Well, yeah, they're, they're, uh, uh, Ron, it's, Dad, what are his cousins with John Connington? Okay, John no, Connington, they're, they're second cousins, but since he's older, I figure maybe that's why he calls him uncle. Sort of like yeah, a there's people that are like second cousins that I call them uncle because they're like a higher generation. It makes sense. Mm-hmm. I think that's that simple. Although I, I guess also to add, I want to add too is the reason he's acting all cocky here is he, that's why he's all red and he's a rooster. He's a cocky. He's got the cock of the walk here. Uh, hey, 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 chill, chill out with the redness. <laughs> you know, I don't think, I don't think um, the Red Rooster knew, I don't think he knew, really knew John Cunnington. I mean, he's so eager to bring him his head, like he probably doesn't even know him, or if he did, it was not much. And, you know, I guess it's one loyalty, or proven loyalty and proven who he's with, you know. But I don't think he has much, to me, when I get here, he doesn't know him that well. You know, he's so eager to bring him his head. Or he's a cowardice, and he's bowing down to the higher power and not standing up for the right thing to do. Yeah. There's or also maybe a bad chance. John Connington was a dick, and he didn't like his uncle back in the day. I don't know. I, I doubt John Connington was a dick. I mean, you know, the, what we see from him, I don't, I don't think so. I think he was a good guy. That's I don't think. 
I don't think it's really that important. I think, you know, they don't actually spend much time with them. I think it's just a way to introduce and introduce the problem. Uh, this entire chapter, as it says, it, it says prologue, but it's clearly, eventually, we see that it's through Kevin Lannister's POV. And, I don't, and there isn't an, another POV for Kevin Lannister, and we're... You know, it's his death, and it's the it's the only chapter we get to really see who he is because, you know, we we'll always see it through other people's eyes. So the perspective it's always different because every person sees what have you know they're not. How do you call it um, when you can't trust the POV because it's oh. it's not objective. Subjective. All the other chapters are, and this is the first time we get to see just how. Kevin Lannister is as a person and how he's doing and I think the point is to see that he's completely you know he is a good leader as you've said but he's very overwhelmed he's not like he's got like no help anywhere he's surrounded by Tyrells even the ones that are on his side like myself aren't that great of a help uh, Cersei has made an absolute mess of things Tywin is dead uh, and he's like got surrounded ironborn from one side then this pretender from one side the north and the other just i don't think the the roost i think it's just a way of introducing the whole all of that issue and just seeing what kind of person he is and really how much are the lannisters gonna lose when you know his end eventually comes to the end you kind of see he's trying to put everything together and then when he's dead everything's clearly gonna go back to being a mess again Correct. I, I don't think he's he's anything special, and I don't think he's something to necessarily focus on. It, it's just something to push the plot, you know, to to make it go forward. And just like Tinker said, to explain the situation. That that's all he was used for. I, Is I there anyone? Go, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, okay, and I'm agreeing with you, but I'm saying, is there anyone here, raise your hand, that thinks that Cunnington will actually bring him his head? No, right? No. Fuck no. no yeah. it's, it's the only reason is it just gives a glimpse of why what John Cunnington was like. I mean, we, we might have a scene, you know, in Wind's Winter or something of a confrontation between the two, because obviously Ron is over here saying, you know, that he'll bring him his uncle's head. And, you know, Ronnie will come after him or something, and then John will kill him or something. I mean, obviously, he's John Connington's a bigger character than Ronnie. It's, it's, that's just the way it's yeah. going to be. But I do have to say, when I when I read the part of uh, Mr. Terrell and the chair, it's just, I found it so funny. It's just such a huge, silly, ridiculous thing that Mr. Terrell would do that I can just completely picture the most ridiculous chair and Tim sitting there is just come on there's no one did no one giggle when they read that part his his the the hand carved wood yeah. thing yeah yeah i did oh. <laughs> when do you think he had that constructed off screen probably like <laughs> from, he was probably expecting it to be named hand a lot longer ago, but Cersei was crazy. Like, so, yeah. like Ren, like in, around Renly time. Do you think he probably had it commissioned back? Yeah, then? when they made the marriage, he's like, "Get on there!" Oh, oh God! Yeah. <laughs> Give me a wood chair. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, I got, I got, got a hand. I'm going the king. Oh man. God, can, how silly can someone get? And you know what, like, j just that right there, it kind of, they they did Mace Tyrell right in the show just by showing how ridiculous he is, you know, like with his little one-liners, well, you know, and his <laughs> just his would, little quips and, and stuff like that. I would that. say, I though, it. like, when I was reading through this, like, I didn't remember how much of kind of like a pompous dick he kind of is, and they didn't do that on the show. They uh, omitted that essentially in full, and I think he's kind of a pompous dick when I read him in the book. Well, I just don't think they, get, they, they gave us enough of him. They gave us a lot more of the Queen of Thorns, so we kind of only see a little bit of him in the show. But, I mean, like, I, I think Mace Tyrell is made out to be a fucking joke. Like, he's... But then he's again, hold on, hold on. Joke. Before we rag too much on Mace Tyrell, we also gotta remember, if... I don't know how well y'all remember, before before this book came... Or, dance, well, you can't see what I'm ruffling up. Before Dance of Dragons came out, Wyman Manderley was very much thought of the same way, and Dance of Dragons came out, and that changed the whole game. Hmm. 
Yeah, I, but I don't think Mace I'm Trap. I'm not gonna put them two in the same boat. No. I'm, I'm just saying though. I'm just saying like we've we've seen this before, and had you know. We've been bamboozled by George in the past. I think, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I get the kind of the uh, more of a pompous dick vibe from mm -hmm. from Mace. Uh, he's not, more, I, mean, I think he's more overconfident. It's, it's weird, though, like, because, I mean, we're talking about the chair, but he, pull, he pulled it out the day he got given the office, so he must have had it already. He's like, he produced it then. He's like, got this chair. I, I don't I, I don't think... Um, like Wyman Manderley is a savage. <laughs> Mace, Mace Tyrell is like, I don't know. He's an idiot. We didn't, I'm, I'm just saying we didn't know that. Like we, when we just had the first, we had the first four books. We did. We didn't know. Yeah, um, we didn't. We didn't. Yeah, yeah, I agree. We didn't really know until that Frey boy, uh, till Big Walder, that Little Walder, boy. Little yeah, Walder, that Frey boy, <laughs> till Little Walder got <laughs> killed, and. Manderly's just sitting there like, oh, another dead fray. The world's a better place. No. Like, in front of all his kin and stuff. I'll, I'll set the over-under at 90% that he is actually a pompous dick. <laughs> it's not a Wyman swerve. I'll, I'll set the over-under at 90%. Yeah, because we already know that during the war, he failed miserably. Like, he hasn't shown... We've, we have... We know in the past that he hasn't shown really any any brilliance. He didn't get anything done during Robert's Rebellion, and well, we all... His vassal, his, his army got the one victory against Rob, Robert Baratheon. But it, it wasn't him leading it, it was Randall Tarley. Well, yeah. you see, do you give credit to the vassal, or do you give credit to the, the man on top? It just depends. I give credit to the person who organized the battle, and that's Randall Tarley. <clears throat> and we've already seen that he's very competent. Okay, I mean, that's fine. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just curious, because we... There's a lot of like, uh, what do you call it? Like people say, Rob never lost a battle. Well, he, that's because he had what's his name organized. Uh, Blackfish organized all his battles. So we're gonna say that. If we're gonna say Rob uh, had. Yeah, but he actually fought great. in the battles. So what, do we, so what do we really know yeah, about? Mace? Yeah, yeah Rob. Know... Rob fought in the vanguard. Mm. We. What and do we really know front. about? What do we really know about Mace Tyrell? We don't know anything about his tournament history. Was he a tourney fighter? Was he, um, has he ever fought in the war? Is he always sat in the vanguard? No, we, we just we know, know he was there. We don't know. We, yeah, we, we don't, we, we don't know. And that's he had an excellent, he had an excellent, uh, advisor in, uh, Randall Tarley. Now, just, now we know his, we know his children. But he described of be, us being fat and eating all the time. The, the only know. thing he's done for if is you're fat and eating money. all the time, you can be intelligent military commander. Is that what you're saying? All right, all right. All right. Hold on, stop arguing and let me finish what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, so we, we do know that Garland Garland is a great warrior. Loris is a great warrior. What was the name of um, the, the one that got injured? Um, the that, Gimp. That, that, Willis. 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 We know he was good before he got hurt. So is it in the blood? Maybe he is a great warrior. We just don't know. We haven't seen it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not he saying that. Like at this point. Like, yeah, yeah, like, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Uh, hey, his wife is a high tower. He, they could have gotten it from her. Hmm. Oh, well, probably, I think probably. He's a but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We don't. We don't know. Um, yeah, we, we don't know. Command one of the most powerful armies in Westeros, and mm -hmm. you know. We don't know. Tinker, look, look at what you did bring, bringing up a wooden chair. You, <laughs> you just get into a five minute discussion about Mace Tyrell. <laughs> I don't think George would pull that trick a second time. The, you mean the Wyman Manderley Mace Tyrell comparison? I don't, yeah. I, I, I don't yeah, think he's like going to pull the video on, on us twice. He, he, George has known the whole tricks like on us, like the the, the death fake out trick. He's pulled that how many times? I don't know. Well, what we do know, what we do know that's for certain is that the Tyrells are changers, or they change their loyalty. So if Aegon comes in and takes King's Landing, he'll probably bend the knee to Aegon and 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 fuck oh. the Lannisters. I mean, if, he's, about, okay, if he's alive. How about I just change the wording then and say that it is 100% true that he's at least acting like a pompous dick. <laughs> it is 100% true. Right back to it. Right back to it. Willie, carry us on, man. Okay. So, <clears throat> after this, Kevin Lannister is uh, starting to resent the demands of Mace Tyrell when it comes to adding more people to the City Watch and uh, 
other demands that he's making. But Kevin Lannister actually cannot openly oppose uh, Mace Tyrell because him and Randall Tarly have both brought their armies to King's Landing, while the Lannister army, the bulk of the Lannister army, is still in the Riverlands trying to quell open rebellion out there. Um, <clears throat> Mace Tyrell says that he and Randall Tarly are going to take care of John Connington and Aegon after Marjorie's trial. Kevin Lannister kind of doubts this. And, you know, he kind of openly kind of goes at them about that. But Mace is like, look, look, look. My daughter is still locked up right now. That is my main concern. Nothing else matters. She is the queen. She needs to get out. Oh, and by the way, why can't Tommen just let her go and, and say that she's innocent? And Kevin Lannister explains to her, look, you know, we got the Faith Militant out here, these poor fellows running around beating up everybody. Um, the thing that we need to do is we need to have this show trial go on and let the Faith think that they've won everything or else it could turn into chaos. And that is the thing that we don't need right now. Because we don't need the Faith Militant and whoever else deciding that they're going to join up with either Stannis or John Connington. And especially at the time when the Iron Man is still raiding the West Coast. Um, Mace Tyrell me... says that Pax the Red Wine is going to take care of the Ironborn. And Stannis still has to take uh, has to uh, face Bruce Bolton. And also, it's winter in the North, and Stannis is not a Northerner. Um, <clears throat> he also dismisses John Connington and the Golden Company, saying that, look, these guys are nobodies. They're a bunch of adventurers just looking for adventure. And the moment that they taste the real battle... That they're gonna be done for and they're gonna be out of here. The fucker, they are raiding right now. I mean, hey, mm. you know, look, this is Mace Tyrell talking. So, mm. <laughs> you know, you he's can telling us everything that's gonna happen right here. He's telling us that the Red Wine Fleet is gonna get smashed. That um, they're underestimating all these. They're telling us what's gonna happen right here. Well, are they gonna get smashed? No, yeah. I, I think I think he meant to to say the Ironborn. Like they're they're expecting that the Red. Red wine fleet is gonna smash the ironborn. No, no, so you're, gonna, I'm you're expecting is, to take the shield island back, is what they're expecting. What I was saying is, you know, that the red wine fleet is gonna get smashed by the ironborn this time, and um, all this stuff that these don't believe like that, though. I believe, no, that. I'm, I'm saying, I, but I'm oh, go ahead, James. But this is what LT's saying. Wait, wait, I, I get what LT's saying. He's saying that by them saying this. He's not saying that they're saying it explicitly to him, but he's saying that the story is yeah, like gonna flip it. Is going to say yeah, the yeah, telling yeah. us yeah. the opposite. Yeah. But, but what, what hold I on. Doesn't Euron's isn't Euron's plan to give the uh to allow them to take it back? Like like he's playing them for fools, I think, like with them trying to take it back, isn't he? <laughs> Willie man, like, we we haven't heard from from you yet. Like we we've all been talking, you've just been narrating. What 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 do you take away from all this? I mean, you know what? I do agree with LT on this one. You know, um, I think that everything that Mace Tyrell is thinking is going to happen, the opposite is going to happen, and even the fact that Kevin Lannister is thinking to himself, like, look, you know, John Connington lost against, um, against Robert Baratheon, and he's been exiled for, like, almost 20 years now. I'm pretty sure the guy's probably picked up a trick or two. And he has the Golden Company. And, you know, and Mace Tyrell is like, look, you know what? John Connington was a failure during Robert's Rebellion. And the Golden Company have failed every time that they've tried anything. It's not a problem. And the thing that uh, Mace Tyrell fails to realize is right now, uh, you still have a country that is uh, still reeling from war. You know, the Seven Kingdoms is not whole at this time. So, um, he's kind of underestimating the fact that you have one strong force. And, I mean, remember, the Golden Company is supposed to be, 
basically the most powerful sellsword group in all of Essos. Yeah, they are. Is this they, all, the uh, of all, all of them are broken men. They they have nothing to lose, and they're just there for gold. So they'll do anything. They might have Blackfire. They might have Blackfire. Yeah. No, well, actually, no I think Blackfire is with. Uh, it's either well, it might be because it might be with Aegon uh, or Fagon. Because uh, if you read the, if you read, if you listen to George narrate uh, one of the chapters prior to. Um, dance coming, dance coming out. The sword was actually there was a mention of a sword in the background of Hilario's uh, um, his mansion, which was which might have been Blackfire. Hmm. So they might have. Oh. They have I definitely think he's gonna get Blackfire. Whoever has it, I think Aegon will get it. Hmm. Like um, Aegon, 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 no, yeah. Aegon. Hey, let's uh, let's have that conversation for the end of that. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah, right, we, we could be here true. for five hours just talking about that one, and just be back <laughs> yeah. and forth. He's true. He's false. He's true. He's false. <laughs> I don't know why they mentioned about Stannis. It's not like. Dude, Stannis, if he was ever to come to King's Landing, it would be like five years from now because he's got to, you know. First, worry about Bruce Bolton and the, and and the phrase. So yeah, I don't know why they mention like Stannis is a threat. It takes some time. What else is uh, going to take? Always, some threat for he's muskers, always a they threat. Plan ahead. No, no like, I know, but what I'm saying is, shit. Like, okay, if Stannis wins the Battle of Ice, for him to come to King's Landing would probably be in a dream of spring. Yeah, that's how long you got to gather more troops and get stronger and take out this and take out that. It would be a long time before Stannis would come. But the to march is like a month. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, but even if it's years and years ahead, Stannis is—he's a good leader. He's—he's he's a good. He knows how to uh, how to lead armies. He's someone to be afraid of, even if it's gonna come in four or five years. And he's already been there in the in the gates of King's Landing, so he's been closer to King's Landing than anyone else. So it makes sense that they still have him in his mind, yeah. if it takes some time. And yeah, you don't want to get caught slipping in this story. We've seen what happens when people get caught slipping. It's not. Yeah. It's, it doesn't end up well. And that's yeah. what's gonna happen to the phrase in the in the Boltons. They're gonna get caught slipping. <laughs> God, I hope so. We'll see. <laughs> that's right. the I mean, that's the the grievous mistake that a lot of people in the game make that are actually playing the Game of Thrones is. They that get they <laughs> they get caught slipping. They don't yeah. think about they think about right now and not future. They don't think about all the threats. I think um, Littlefinger probably plays it the best. Bye bye. Okay. Go for it. Uh, I was gonna say I think um, what you brought up this whole this whole section, Don Willie, is that we see that Kevin has a grasp of sort of the diplomatic tensions that are going on in the city and he knows what needs to be done to kind of quell all the sides whereas like if mace was in charge right now like you know there might be end up being a riot on the hand on on the people you know from the people because they're just like bypassing everything that, that they want right now with in terms of bringing you know potentially justice uh in their eyes what was agreed to tax so i think you see that kevin kind of has his like pulse on of what the people want yeah, he learned from Tywin. Yeah, you know. Joffrey was. Sorry, I was gonna uh, say Joffrey is still alive. The sparrows would be all arrested and sent in prison, and the high sparrow would be murdered, and there would be a, they'd put a new high sparrow in. Or not who knew high sparrow? New I high sparrow. them. Yes. They'd be civil radicals. Deem them as terrorists and get eradicate them like um the great um um what's his name Jerry? Help me out here. The book just came out. What? The, the old king, the the crazy king, um, Megor. Do what Megor did to them. Show them who's boss. Yeah, but Megor didn't win. It kept on going they and did. going and going. They, they, the the sparrows were like put put in check until now, until the fifth book. So you did win. No, because as eventually as... another one made peace. I don't remember his name. I'm I'm horrible at names. Roger Harris. Yeah, I think so. The old yeah, but they never uprise. That's what thing. I'm saying. They never thought to uprise or do the same thing that they did before until until now. Well, they were pretty much put into like almost uh, outlaw, like the status the way with after what Megor did to them. 
Yeah, and bloody Cersei then and back, honestly. And, and if Mace Tyrell and Tarly wanted, they could take them out right now, and boom, they're done. But I guess it's the fear of the people, you know, what mm -hmm. the people would do. Oh, hey, it is what just, it is. Just basically, Kevin is very pragmatic here, and he just basically doesn't want to make... He knows that there's issues. He doesn't want to create... He doesn't want to solve any issues by creating further issues. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, listen, well, I think, uh, Kevin, Kevin does seem like a good short guy. Term. At, least, at least short term, he doesn't want to um, get in more of that later. Short term or long term? I think he's thinking more long term because Maester Earl is just thinking, just let's get rid of this and let's do it and let's do it fast. But then it can have long term consequences if it the if that feeling starts spreading around the peasants from all of King's Landing. And the long term all of a sudden means a few years down the road, like not not like a few days or a few months. That's just um... yeah, because I I think I think um. Tinker is right on that because if you look at it, Mace just wants Tommen to just get rid of these charges, just throw them out. And Kevin's like, if we do that, this is going to follow Marjorie forever. Like, that's what he's thinking. Yeah, it's like if a president pardoned a criminal, and how's he going to look? A bad criminal that we all know is guilty, like a hardcore criminal, like somebody who killed 10 people. If a president pardoned that person, it's going to make him look like, like shit. Yeah, but I think a lot of it might be just Tyrell. He's just kind of putting the pressure on him, like, okay, we'll play your farce, but it better go. It better stay a farce. She better be found get, get innocent. I you just know, don't know why it makes Tyrell. You know, what hap you know what's gonna happen. Yeah, I think Margie will win her trial by faith. I don't know why he's so worried. Yeah, I think he's just ensuring that the the what do you call it? The odds stay in his favor. Yes, because look what happened to Cersei. And Cersei was the mother of the queen. In other times, that would be completely unthinkable. And Kevin let it happen to his own niece. So Marjorie's not family. As you know, Mr. Earl is thinking right now as a father. He's thinking this guy is not, might not even like my daughter, might not care that she's been found guilty. And he, he let his own niece be humiliated. I can, I can understand that, that side of my, Mr. L. That's where that's where Kevin's a little kind of a I would say a little craving because if Tywin was still alive, well, if Tywin was still alive, it wouldn't happen. But say Tywin would have never let that happen to Cersei. He would never. Well, I mean, as pop as, as stu stupid as Tyrell's coming off here, he is playing like a subtle game where he's putting his he's got his army there. He's putting a lot of his men in the gold company, so it like he's letting it be known that if she's not found innocent, shit might go down. So. Play, yeah, it's like insinuating. play your cards how you want after that. I think they're kind of insinuating, too, that, like, if Cersei loses and um, if, say, say, both of them lose, I, I think they're kind of insinuating, fuck the Sparrows, we're going to take them out. I, I, I kind of, I, that's what I'm getting, that I think that if they were, but I don't think they're going to lose. I think Cersei will win and Marjorie will win her thing. But I'm saying, mm -hmm. I think they're insinuating if they do lose that they're going to not let any, they're not going to, they're going to fight them, you know? Do you think that um, Kevin is dead? So Mace Tyrell becomes basically he's he's the hand of the king, so he's gonna be the one in power making decisions now over Tommen. Do you think Unless he's gonna let his daughter go to trial? Um, Unless well, he's fired I mean, by new regent Cersei. I, I but think can so Cersei get out of her little her little septa prison? She, yeah, she's see, gonna the thing. eventually. Here's the thing. It's, it's, it's how we get spoiled a little bit. I mean, and I know Jerry hates the show, but um, how they show us how Cersei came back into power in the show, I believe that's gonna happen in the books too. I believe that, you know, because what Kevin says, her reign is over, she will not have no more power. I think they're telling us the opposite. I think she's gonna take come into power and she's gonna be running. I'm not saying she's gonna become queen again, like, uh, like the show, but she's gonna come into power again and. Well, I think he still has Quiborn, and we've seen that Quiborn is capable of things. So even if she doesn't take over immediately, without having her uncle watching over her, I think those who are like kind of holding her little by little are not gonna are gonna start either disappearing or not having as much power. <coughs> she's gonna she's gonna do something. We've had too many too many things that we've heard that have compared to her like going batshit crazy 
that I do think that she's going to do, she's going to try to do something to the Tyrells to, you know, this episode, we in this chapter, we see her and we see her very calm. I don't think that's going to last. And yeah. without her uncle there. Oh. Without like, somebody to pull, pull, what is it, draw her fangs or draw her claws, without somebody to do that, she's going to. I think it's going to go down a lot like it went down in the show. I think that is foreshadowed with Magor. Magor did a lot, and Tyrion compares Cersei to Magor. She says, he says she's about as gentle as Magor the Cruel, so I think you're on to something. And, and that's where... Uh, uh, oh, we'll go to say that, I was going to say, and that's going to be the perfect opportunity, in my opinion. Um, I know I'm getting a little ahead here, but if... if Say Cersei's trying to take out the sparrows and there's chaos in the city. That's the perfect time for Aegon to swoop in and take everything and when nobody's aware and, and take the throne. Yeah, I mean, I think we're getting a little head like on that. So, uh, Don Willie, do you want to move on to Harris Swift and uh, Tarly talking? Uh, yeah, so, you know, after this, uh, the small council basically <laughs> is saying, hey, look, you know what? We need to take care of... John Connington and Aegon, because if we don't, they could actually decide to join up with Daenerys. And even though they don't believe that Aegon is real, they definitely know that Daenerys is real, and they're scared of her dragons. So, Pycelle offers to try to buy off the Golden Company, but Harris Swift, who is now Master of Coin... Is like, hey, uh, yeah, maybe not so much. But the Iron Bank is calling in their money. Cersei's been blowing them off for months now. Uh, we tried getting some loans from Mir. Uh, they're not really giving us favorable terms. Oh, yeah, and also there was that whole thing with all of the fabled wealth of Dragonstone, which has not been found. And Mace Tyrell kind of gets angry about that and is like, look... My son went and, you know, turned over that entire castle, didn't find a damn thing, not even, you know, the dragon eggs that were supposed to be there. And Kevin Lannister thinks to himself that, you know what, uh, he probably didn't do that great of a job, seeing as how it was built by Valerian magic, so who knows what could possibly be left there. Uh, Kevin Lannister decides to say, hey, well, you know what? Stannis probably just took all of all of the valuable stuff when he left. Uh, so Kevin says to Harry Swift, hey, you know what? Go to the uh, Pentashi Magister moneylenders, or, you know what? You can try to go to Bravos yourself and see if the Iron Bank will give us some new terms. So, uh, what are we making of this whole turn of events with basically now everyone who wasn't necessarily aware of the financial situation, uh, you have more people who are, who are st now starting to find out that the Iron Bank is basically broke. I mean, Kevin Lannister talks about how they might even need to, uh, how the Lannisters... Uh, might need to pitch in to pay off the Iron Thrones bank to, I mean, Iron Thrones debt to the Iron Bank. Uh, but they're already, the Iron Bank is already in debt to the Lannisters, so it's, uh, that's, uh... the Lannisters are in debt to the Iron Bank. No, the, no. no. The, throne, the, iron, the throne, the Iron Throne. Yeah, the, the throne is not, you said the Iron Bank is in... Oh, okay, okay, right? okay, alright. No, that one really said it wrong, so, yeah. Oh, sorry that's what that. I was saying, yeah. My bad. It's all good. We Sorry. know what you meant. The, the crown, yeah. the crown is in debt to the Lannisters to the as Lannister. well as the Iron Bank. Crown is in debt to everyone. But it's funny because that was basically Robert's debt, and he's gone. So what is it? It's Tommen's debt. I mean, and they're all they're all the same family. They call him Baratheon, but they're all the same family. So it's hilarious. It's basically the Lannisters too. Now, yeah. pretty much. Well, I mean, his name is Tommen Baratheon. So. <coughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. And I got a question real quick. So they mentioned, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think you mentioned this. Um, she mentioned that, uh, or I'm sorry that he mentions that he gives, um, 
Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt, Carnington, um, the Mountains Men, right? And so we know in the in the release chapter where we see Arya that Ralph the Sweetling or Polliver, whatever one it is, is the one she kills. So did Carnington go the, to Bravos with Mace Tyrell? Because that's his men now. Huh? Wait, wait, say again? They mentioned earlier in this chapter that um, that they gave the mountains men to Cunnington. To, to no, the no, Cunnington. They gave, they, no, they gave him the, to Harris Swift. I thought he said Cunnington. Okay, I got confused no, there. My yeah, bad. and then they sent Swift over there, so that's why he's got yeah. Okay, my bad. Sorry for the confusion. Well, I think, I mean, I was just saying, you know, it's, you see the, the effect, you know, what's the biggest effect on, uh, you know, on politics or governance is the economy. I mean, they say, you know, uh, Kevin is shrewd enough to know that they're kind of in a bind because, well, the current state of, you know, people's morale is you can't tax them right now. You can't hike taxes or you're going to have a full on riot on your hands. So once again, I think it shows the shrewdness of Kevin knowing the pulse of the, you know, pulse of the people and um, the effect of the economy on, on, on politics. But I, I also found it ironic when uh, Kevin was talking about how, uh, you know, little finger would make this all, all good again. And I think this goes to where the book did better in the show. Obviously, it was Little Finger as a whole because Little Finger was more of a snake in the grass. You know, people legitimately liked him. They thought he was a good person. He had their best interests in mind. Uh, he wasn't a mustache twirling villain. Um, and I like that. I like that that was called back here. The fact well, I that think, uh, he was unassuming. They thought that they were, he was a good person or that he was competent in his job. Well, I'm just saying that he was more that that he himself was better at hiding his true nature is what, essentially what I was saying. I'm not saying they thought he was a uh, great guy or anything. I'm assuming, and just, yeah. good, just good with numbers. I mean, listen, well, this at this time plan. they still they still don't even suspect that he's the reason why they're bankrupt right now. Mm -hmm. That's why he's so genius, and that's yeah. This is all his plan. Yeah. You know, I I don't think he's the reason they're bankrupt. I think he's part of it. He he did he like he was yeah he was spent the money a lot and then he also uh, but then also Robert spent a lot so it was easy it was easy to embezzle money when Robert was asking for a lot of things he's just you know spend but like the joke you know he spent a hundred dollars on the toilet twenty uh, you know or sorry hundred dollars on a toilet seat you know thousand on the actual thing. Well, I also suspect that he really encouraged Robert as well because we also don't get his PO, neither of their POVs, and we no, already. He just, that, he just he just like here you go. And 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 Little Finger is very good at getting people to do what what he wants them to do without actually telling them to do. And I think he and I think he was really good at probably encouraging Robert to like overspend and get him. I don't think he was good at encouraging him, but I think he let a. Let an image of like, well, whatever you want, you can do this because I'll take care of it. Like, well, I mean, he may not have encouraged him, but it's like it's like a thing, you know, like um, let's say you're uh, a parent and your kid is like overeating all the time, right? Well, you may not be encouraging him to eat all the time, but you're not stopping him either. Yeah. So he's gonna get fat. Yeah. It's I think it's not only he was enabling him, but he was like he was also saying like, I'm so good at my job, it's not that important that if you want to do. It. Littlefinger was using reverse psychology on Robert and getting him to spend as much as possible. I don't, I mean, I don't think that's true. I just think he was really good, and he didn't. You're always defending Littlefinger, Jerry. Come on, he's a villain. He's not. But he a wasn't good talking dude. like that. Oh no, no, he was right he there. No, Littlefinger. No, no. If you look at it, if you look at it. Um, king Robert, he didn't hardly attend any small council meetings. He was just a bad king. Um, it's easy for people like Littlefinger to exploit that, but at the end of the day, the fault lies at John Aaron and King Robert. True. Well, John Aaron, I, I think that, you know, what we already saw with Ned, like Robert Baratheon is just... <laughs> What do you do with a king that doesn't want to listen to you, even if you're the best hand in the world? Well, he did listen to him. He put John Connington's the one who put, and I'm sorry, John Aaron's the one who put Littlefinger at the mid master point. And some things, but in other things, Robert, come on, he was, Grace said it, he was a terrible, terrible, terrible king. Oh, he was. Yeah, he referred to the small council meetings as what they were just sitting over there counting coppers and shit. <laughs> 
you know? Jerry's Jerry's the only one, and, and I admit Littlefinger's a genius, but Jerry's the only one who can't admit that Littlefinger is the only one. Snake. But I don't make Jerry stuff is about Littlefinger, like one. saying he was twirling his mustache and behind whispering these secrets into Robert's ear. No, like oh, a villain j- just twirling. Yeah, his like, I, don't, I don't make that stuff. <laughs> like, he was best in money. Dude, he was, uh, but he wasn't like, I guarantee you, Robert said, I want to. was I a want... great man. Like, oh, shut you. up. <laughs> he, was, he wasn't doing that. Like, you're just, you're just. You're just trying to make this like a Harry Potter or a, some kind oh, of. No, 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 I'm not saying that he was like that, Jerry. No, not like the show. He was. He's so. He's, he's way too smart in the books. I'm way too uh, smart to get off. Hey, the gavel just got swung and slammed down. Jimmy B wants to move on. Yeah, let's move on. Let's stop making stuff. Up. <laughs> yeah, this was right. Anyway. <laughs> so um. All right, so next up, uh, they decide to talk about Cersei's trial by combat and the fact that she has chosen her representative, her champion, as Sir Robert Strong. And Mace Tyrell and Randall Tarley are kind of like, listen, uh, who is this guy? How have we never heard of him? You know, he's some giant who comes out of nowhere who gets put on the king's guard how in the world is this even possible um, but they can't question it too much because who else do they have you know uh cersei wants him on the king's guard he's on the king's guard there were enough slots open because king's guard members are you know dropping like flies nowadays um and Mirren trent you know like has been spreading rumors that he's never seen uh, he's never seen Robert Strong eat or drink, and Sir Boros Blunt says he has never seen him move. Uh, seen him use the privy, and Kevin Lannister says that's because dead men don't shit. Uh, and at this point, it's kind of one of those open secrets where, yeah, everyone knows who he is, but no one knows who he is, and. You know, while Mace is kind of like, look, why is this even a big deal? Kevin points out to him that, hey, look, if Cersei loses this trial, then that calls into question whether or not her kids are actually legitimate. And if Tommen is not a legitimate king, then that means Marjorie is not a legitimate queen. So at the end of the day... Not only does Marjorie need to win her trial, but Cersei needs to win hers as well. And hey, they're like, look, you know what? All right, cool. That that's 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 fine, well and dandy. But how's about this? Uh, how's about we talk about Mar? Not Marjorie. Uh, Marcella's uh engagement right now. And Mace Tyrell is like, hey, you know what? How about we take Marcella away from the Dornish because she's already gotten injured down there. And Do they even know that? I don't, don't think they know that yet. Yeah, they know about yeah, that. Yeah, they know. They see it. Yeah, we're, word came back real quick. Yeah, they don't know the full extent. They know that she's been injured and they know that uh, they have people out there looking for Darkstar, but they don't know the, the full extent of what happened. And they also know that, um, uh, which is it, Tyene? Lady Nim. Nim, yes. Nimerius. Right, right. Yeah, and they say, uh, yeah, she might have the, the, the nickname of Lady, but she's no Lady for real. Which is kind <laughs> of, uh, like, oh, man, they, they, they throwing shots at her just because she's over his daughter. And she's coming to claim his council seat, right? Right. Yeah, over his council seat, yeah. Yeah, and, and he mentions that Mace is not gonna like it. God, I cannot wait for a chapter of the small council with Lady Nimda. No shit, like uh, Tinker. <laughs> I, I'm in. The, I'm in the same boat with you, like because um, the I, I think like three years ago, but before they introduced uh, the Sand Snakes in the show, um, there was a 
a girlfriend I had at the time, and I was like, they're introducing the Sand Snakes, they're introducing the Sand Snakes, you know, like, it was such a big deal, like, La- Lady Nymeria was, like, in my mind, was just the fucking bee's knees, you know, like, <laughs> not Obara, not anybody else, like, it was all Lady Nym, and then, like, when, you know, when I found out, uh, of course, that she was coming to King's Landing, I was like, what the fuck? fuck you know like holy shit like shit's about to get real you know and it dominantly it's just like you said um they call her lady nim but she's not a lady i was like well actually yes she is and she will also fucking murder you like she will fucking kill you you know like so that just in my opinion, I, I was like that. That is the coolest thing. Do, do, <laughs> that is just the coolest thing. Okay, so, I mean, even though we're um, you know spoiling at the end with Kevin dying, will she still sit on her council seat? Because I think we can assume that with Kevin dying, that Cersei's going to come queen regent either through her own methods or. Varys will do something to pull well, the strings. She would in order have to, to dismiss in. the entire fucking council if she's going to count that out. Like, but I, mean, she, but she, I think she would severely oppose to Nim being on that council, especially okay. once she sees Marcella. I think, she, I think she, they have to put her on the count. I think they have to put her on the council because it's like the, it was over in seat. So I think they have to. Well, I mean, they're going to want the loyalty of Dorne. That's the the biggest thing is they don't want the Dornish possibly going over um, to John Connaughton or Harris. Okay, then why would they dismiss but, them? Like, well, that, but that's the thing. The but, that's never been conquered. Like, don't don't you want those people? Don't you these want? These are that all reasonable points. Side? The problem is we're dealing with Cersei, who's not a reasonable person. Exactly. Yeah, but I do think Cersei is capable of just becoming regent. Like, it's not kind of like in the show where she just kills a bunch of people and then she can just take over. But there's a lot more people in this small council. Mace Tyrell is hand. She's still surrounded by the Septus and the, the High Sparrow is watching her. I think it's going to take her a little time to yeah. go to become regent. Just because he dies, Kevin dies, I don't think she's just going to be able to just march and say, now I'm regent. I, I agree think with when she wins, when she... Sorry. I'm going to be the regents and be in power for a little time until Cersei starts killing them off. I, I agree with that, but I also think that those that who oppose her regency will mysteriously find little children with daggers in their rooms. Definitely. I definitely agree, and I think when Cersei wins her trial by combat, all the cards are off the table. To what she could do, because I think I think Varys wants Cersei in power to be screwing things up and breaking oh, these alliances. Okay. We'll get to that. Well, actually, we'll get to that later, or as we go yeah, on. But I think that Varys would also want Lady Nim in power. I think he wants the, he wants the Dornish on his side, and I don't. And I think that he would want Lady Nim in power. So he I might want her there. I don't know what he. Oh, it's hard to say with those guys. Like he wouldn't want to rock people too much. Oh, but oh, come on, we need to have Lady Nim in the small council, at least just to have one chapter, to enjoy Miss Sorrel being torn to shreds by her sharp tongue. I think Varys might intercept Lady Nim and Marcella on their way to King's Landing. That's a possibility. Sad- sadly, because I think he does want the Dornish to go over to Aegon, and he mm-hmm. does want the ground eaten beneath of Tommen. He wants... An unstable King's Landing. I mean, exactly. that's, if if Varys wants Dorn on his side, I mean, it would be a way it would be getting Cersei back in power, and then have them going back on their deal and getting them off the council. Then that would, you know, infuriate Dorn. So that would work for. I mean, Varys is pragmatic. He's going to do what it takes. So I don't know if we're going to get him on the council. No. Unfortunately. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so either. But I, but I would like to see it, though. I would. Yeah, it would be cool. yeah. But I, I wanted to say, uh, from this part that Don Willie was reading about, is I want what I want to know is because obviously uh, they were talking about some of the weird shit happening with the, uh, well, we believe is Frank and Gregor, obviously, uh, in Sir Robert Strong. <clears throat> I want to. I, I hope we get like kind of the because obviously he was a creation of Kyburn. Kyburn being a former Maester, Maester's not using magic more being scholars and men of science i, I want to know kind of the, the the scientific 
I guess, method on how on how Robert or Robert Strong on on how he is what he is. I um, kind of know. Well, I know, but it'd be. I mean, because he's he's not. He shouldn't be a magical being. You know, he shouldn't be alive for magic be. being. No, he's he's Frankenstein. It's, but it's, we don't know, know that actually. My you know, my issue my issue with that is nobody is freaked out about it. Like they talk about it and they wonder about it, but nobody's freaked out that a dead person is alive and not eating. Do they know that? Though? I, I was, I was, I was they do, do they know great, he's but, uh, he's a resuscitated dead being? But there should be more reaction. They like, sus- but, but, well, they suspect it. Like Ke- when yeah, Kevin's thinking himself, suspect. men don't eat. When when Kevin's thinking to himself, dead men don't eat. He should be like, holy shit, he's dead. Fucking, <laughs> but he should be thinking that, but he's not. Well, see, but here's the thing, though. I, I think it has more so to do with. I think it's, it more so has to do with the fact that it's like, look, this is something that we can't necessarily expose to the public. And also, they're probably thinking he was already crazy before, and now he's kind of unleashed to a certain extent. They're probably scared. So it's like, you know what? Let's just not talk about it. And so scared way, they don't want to acknowledge that he might, that a dead man might be. I mean, I, I agree that that could be a possibility. Just getting the I, clarifying that. What, but the what thing about it is, I don't, I don't think that they actually think he's dead. I don't think that it's a like. Remember, these are Southerners. You know, they're the ones. Hey, who hey, what, really what you saying, homie? What, what, Listen, what you saying know, about? We, a... we know the Southerners <laughs> really don't believe in the magics like the North does, right? So, so you're just like they just can't comprehend it, basically. Not even they're just can't comprehend it. It's not even a thought that crosses their mind. Because that's what I'm like, saying. Like, I, I don't even famous. think that they know what's going on. Right. To well, them, I think you know, Kevin suspects. Grumpy is a Dead men don't shit, but I think he's the only one. I think the others think that he was kind of saved in the last minute by Quiborn, but that something's of not as great as he used to be. And I think that Kevin, at this point, he's just too tired to fucking care. <laughs> I think that, you know, so many things have gone wrong. Tyrion escaped after murdering his father. Jamie's kind of like, you know, they don't know what's happened to him. Look what's happened to Cersei. There's war freaking everywhere. I, I don't think he actually, I think at this point, he's just like, he doesn't want to think about it. He's under control. We also know that the mountain was difficult. You know, he, they were, they kind of unleashed him, but then he also used to cause other kinds of problems. So he's like, whatever, he's leashed right now. He's kind of controlled like a pet. Uh, I don't want to think what the hell Quaverns done to him. As long as it's working in our favor and he wins. I can just like sort of ignore the part that he's dead and just let <laughs> that hidden from everyone else. And one I, question. Oh, go ahead. Point. I was I do take back what I said because I, well, I just looked it up because I forgot. I, I knew that I figured that Kyburn was just kicked out of being a maester just because he was experimenting on dead, you know, dead bodies unethically or on people that were about, you know, that he killed. But I guess they, there is a rumor that he was dabbling in black magic and necromancy. So, Oh yeah, he 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 him and Ky- uh, well, he's definitely ma- like he's definitely studied magic and he knows he's worked with uh, Marwin before and as we know Marwin has been doing magic because that's how Mary Math Dur was able yeah, to and resurrect he Drogon fucking, or Drogon. He never got booted, did he? Marwin never got booted. He he no Mar- Marwin was still there. So I mean, it, it's definitely rooted in magic. In fact, I think a lot of the screens that we hear from coming from the cells might have been. You know him burning people with fire, and seeing as we see fire is a magical thing here in the sink, and he just might be experimenting with it. It's like oh, we don't know how he brought back Robert Strong. But one question, Jerry: Is Franken Mountain scaring the little girl? Yes, he's scaring all the little girls and the little men too, and the little LTs. <laughs> and the little LTs. Okay. I have and, no idea and, and the little willies. All right. And the little willies. But, uh, yeah, but anyways, yeah, we didn't get off topic here. Uh, one, one thing I didn't want to mention, um, and that was a good point, Gray Area, about what you said about. I wanted to mention that too, but I'm glad you did. Uh, was Tarly was was uh, Randall Tarly here? Is because Kevin Lannister has talked. Uh, it's like yeah, the Dornish could be a problem. The real problem could be Tarly. He's the real danger. How does he get him on his side? And that's where one thing I think that uh, Kevin Lannister kind of screwed up by naming 
uh, Mace Tyrell, the Hand of the King. I think Jamie had it right when he probably should have named um, Randall Tarley as Hand of the King because that brings that would have brought him onto the Lannister side. Uh, and also, it would have been one of Mace Tyrell's guys that have been on that. So he would have placated both men, accomplished both goals if he would have done that. However, I think Tarly, and I think the show kind of spoiled this, Tarly is a real danger because I think he's joining Fagon. Um, what do you guys think? You think he's going to go to um, Fagon and not Daenerys? Yeah, I think he's the friends. Like, when we see in Arianne's chapter, he's a, the friends in the reach. I think that's well, we, we got we to gotta get through Fagon before we get to Daenerys in, in the books. Yeah. We we have to handle this situation at home in, in Westeros, Fagon and Connington coming, you know, like they're pushing the buttons right now, and then we'll deal with Daenerys later. Could you see a potential marriage between Fagon and Marcella? That'd be cool. I could see a potential one, but I think it's going to be Arianne that's going to do the marriage. That's the one I think it is. I think it's going to be Fagon and. Carry on. Yeah, yeah, because at the end of the day, the Dornish do, they do want uh, some sort of, some sort of power. Carry on, kind of got a little uh, ticked off with the fact that she thought she wasn't going to be queen. And so this is her opportunity now to, uh, you know, for her father to kind of make good on his promise to her. And... It'll all end bad for all of them. It'll, yeah. Yeah. it'll end in dragon fire. Yeah. But what do you think about Tarly? Like, I mean, I brought, I brought him up. Like, what do you think? Is, yeah, I was going to say we, the real we hadn't really talked about. No, him. I think I think Tarly will be with Fagon. I think he'll that it, 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 it's it's setting it up for him to jump ship when they get there. And uh, I mean, obviously, Definitely. they didn't do it in the show because they didn't have Fagon on the show, so that they kind of just switched that around. But I think it's kind be- of a big deal. Like he's he's like the the best general in Westeros, pretty pretty mm-hmm. much, right? I think um, I I disagree. <laughs> I think he's gonna align with Cersei. I I can't see him wanting to fight under the Golden Company. I, I mean, or wanting wanting to be partners with them. You think he's anything. too loyal? Like he's he's, he's too. I mean, set he's in like, his ways. Yeah, he's like and... he's he's like that like an old prude. Like I don't think change is something. Like he can't accept Sam because Sam is different. It's like he he doesn't know what the internet is, so he's not going to get a computer. <laughs> so he's not going to get a computer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but okay. he was a Targaryen loyalist. You know, uh, remember the the Tyrells and the Reach in general actually fought uh, for the Targaryens during Robert's Rebellion. So took a bitter end. Yeah. So I could see him saying, "Hey, you know what? These people were the rightful uh, the rightful ruling family." And if Aegon's not dead, then I actually owe my allegiance to him. He not may, to mention he, he could may. jump up and be the man in the reach if he takes if he sides with them and they knock out uh, the Tyrells and the Lannisters. The reach is his. Well, hey man, uh, don't don't forget if I punch you in the face enough, I can make you do whatever the fuck <laughs> I want you to do. <laughs> I That's the Randall uh, totally way, man. That's what he thinks. To me, to me, the biggest hint is is. Randall Tarly keeps like downplaying the Connington threat. This whole this whole chapter, he's saying like he's fake. Yeah, he's like saying it's fake. It's you know it's not real. You know, I think he's I think he's just trying to downplay it. I think that it's you know it's trying to subvert expectations and that. Dude, this, jump. I think he's downplaying this is the best raid we've seen in a think, long time. I don't think he respects it. But, but like, no, the, I think the, I agree with Gray. Go ahead, go, go ahead, Tinger. I th- I, th- I think I agree with Gray. Uh, he is a he is a good general, but he is very set in his ways. The way that he th- he's very rigid. We've already seen it. He's one of those men that is just doesn't bend, doesn't change his ways. He thinks about honor, what's right, what's wrong, and I don't see him someone as just changing because it's convenient. I I just don't think it's in him. He's like I think the thing stick. is, though, you said yourself that he's rigid in his ways. I mean, he's a, and if he's a loyal man, he's been loyal. He was loyal to the Targaryens in the past. Yes, but just, but just all, he was, he was but, but loyal. But they were conquered. Was, they were defeated. There was another, you know, the, the, the Targaryens became 
the, the kings and queens of Westeros when they conquered. When they lost the war and, and Robert conquered, he took over the throne by right of conquest. Not because, you know, they said that the that he was second cousin or third cousin. I, you know, his grandmother was a Targaryen. But no one really cared about that. It's because he won and he conquered. And then the he two other are... Targaryen uh, are Daenerys, which is a woman, and we already know that he's a sexist idiot, that I don't think he would follow a woman. And then the other chance is Phaegon, which we, which he would actually have to believe that is real. So he's and, a boy lover. And, and I don't, and not only that, someone who was raised outside of Westeros, who was raised with different, in the, you know, uh, who has an army of salt swords, Randall Tarley, who's so set in his ways, who is incapable of, of accepting Sam because that he's different. Do we really, you know, do we really believe that he's capable of, of accepting either of these two no. persons? Yeah, yeah, actually, you know what? He might, be looking, he might be looking at Tommen and be like this chubby little boy who loves cats. I have this warrior. It, it, it doesn't matter. That's the he's crown. He's still a child. That's the crown. Huh? Yeah, that it's the crown. Like he's looking at the crown. Like that's where his allegiance is pledged. So you know, I, like, go ahead. So, okay. so so I look at the um I look at Randall Tarley like this. Randall Tarley was he a Targaryen loyalist? I'm not yes. sure. He was a loyalist to his liege lord. The Tyrells were Targaryen loyalists, and of course they were going to be loyal to House Targaryen because ha House Targaryen raised them up from stewards to become lords so of course they're going to be loyal and randall tarley swore an oath to be loyal to his liege lord now that his liege lord is gone he doesn't have to remain loyal to the targaryens he can do what he wants well i mean it I just think depends on what he how he thinks we, we don't know how we need a pov really to yeah be able to that we out. do I think personally that like how I in the show how he wouldn't bend the knee to Daenerys, but I think it's going to be the opposite. I think when Aegon takes the takes the city, I think he will bend the knee to Aegon. I think it will make sense to him because they're going to believe that. Remember, they say beware of the um, the Mummer's dragon. So we know that he's a false dragon, but they're they're going to believe it. And I personally think he's going to bend the knee. We don't know. Yet. We well, don't yo, know. yo, hey, we're we're all we're all all of us are forgetting the fact it may be Fagon, not it Aegon. is Fagon. So we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Right. Um, but I think me am I only the only one who actually wishes that he was the real Aegon? No, no. We'll get, I, I, I think, we'll get to I think this chapter makes the most that has we'll, the we'll, most case for it. But I'll wait for it. We'll get, yeah, we'll get to that. But I, I, I really? think I just want to clarify. I think I think James, you're on board with me. I think he's already turned. I think he's the friend in the in the reach that that's mentioned in the Arian chapters. Oh, he's he he's woke as fuck right now. He's woke, he's woke, and, he, woke, he's and, woke and, as fuck right now. Woke and right. It would Randall. be interesting. it would be an interesting. <laughs> thing if it is true, but from what I've seen from Tar uh, Randall Tar Tarly, he's just you know you know those kind of people that are so rigid, so strict, so unbendable. Like Stannis. Yeah, that I just don't see it. I don't see him capable of that kind of deception. Maybe I'm wrong, and it turns out to be a really interesting twist, but I don't well, see it. Ultimately, those the, 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 he's a, he'd be the least expecting. You have this person that people view as he's so loyal to his liege lord. I mean, we, we don't have his POV, so we don't know his thoughts. You know, he could be externally expressing a certain way, and then you subvert expectations and go a different way. I don't know. I'm saying it's possible. I don't know if it's going to be the case or not, but we should probably... Move on. Move on. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, Willie. I, I Willie. Was gonna, I was going to bring up something that we actually uh, didn't talk about for this part of the chapter. That is oh, yeah? the fact that no matter whether or not Cersei is innocent or guilty. She's Cersei, guilty as fuck, dude. What are you yeah, talking Cersei about? Will be, <laughs> Cersei will be put out of power. <laughs> Fucking shame. Burn back. that bitch. <laughs> she's going to be sent back to Castle Rock and basically will not be involved in any ruling and will not be involved in raising Tommen any longer after this. Nah, bro, that's <laughs> not gonna happen. It's fucking Cersei Lannister. I mean, like, we don't we don't have the story, we don't know the story, but like there's no fucking way 
that you're just going to take her out. Like you have to have her as a villain that you kind of sometimes feel for and Wait, just take, when, take when her out of her? no, like it, it's just kind of like storytelling, you know, like when, when you read it, you know, like you, sometimes like the compassion that she shows for her children, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Like, no, I think everybody can, can feel for that. Yeah. Tinker, I see you shaking your head, but, um, like she, she is a villain and we need her in power to be this villain, you know, in this story, it, it's just a fucking story for yeah. crying out loud, you know, like, but we need her in that role. Like we love to hate Cersei. Like we, we really do. So I, I don't think that, something is going to happen to take her out of her character profile. You know, like something, something is going to happen to enable Cersei to be back in power to, to her still do her devilish shit, you know, and just make us hate her even more. Like she, she's always, she's going to be a constant until the moment she gets fucking killed. Like she's always going to be pulling these stunts. She's always going to be fucking making our guts like fucking gurgle because we're so fucking mad. You know, like she she's always going to be there up until the moment that that hopefully she gets killed. I'm glad like earlier. Her... Oh, Gray. Sorry, I was going to say like, are, are, did, Gray, were you talking? No, I just said, yeah, I agree. Oh, okay. I was saying so earlier. How I was saying they're te- what they're they're telling us in this chapter. Same thing with Cersei. They're saying she's never going to be in power again. I think after she wins her trial by oh, combat, she's gonna she's gonna have a chip on her shoulder. And what's that saying? Some one of the ladies the, beware. I'll get it wrong. Beware of a woman scorn. Or there's no, no hell has no fury like a woman scorn. So I guarantee I you, she's gonna get revenge on some of the sport, the the sparrows and all that. I guarantee it. Dumb. <laughs> I think she's going to try to kill every single last one of them. <laughs> yeah, she's going to try. Tinker, you, yeah, you, you might be right. She's going to yeah. fucking try. And like, I'm glad you I'm glad you're part of Cersei because that gives Don Willie the chance to give it, bring us right into this Cersei, and this yeah. Cersei scene. Fuck Don Willie. He's just going to talk about Littlefinger for another five minutes. <laughs> you know, like, screw you. Burn them all. <laughs> I was going to say all. that. I was going to say that Cersei, you can see that she hasn't given up. Kevin thinks that she's you know, this relaxed person and she's drawn back her claws and she's, you know, he's just never seen her like this, but she's still playing the game. Like she's still trying to get Tina Mary or Tyene Merriweather, Tina, Tyann Merriweather to come, to come be Tiana Merriweather to come be one of her ladies. And you know that there's reason behind that. She just, she's not just requesting that for nothing. The, the black haired lady. The one that she they like finger bang in the bed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, her. The one that's pretty much described as almost looking like Kim Kardashian. Yeah, the the black haired lady. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But she though, she, though. she took guidance and counsel from her though. Yeah. If I'm not guidance mistaken. Guidance and counsel. Sure. That that's what it's called nowadays, huh? Yeah, that, that, dude, I I don't invite him over for Netflix and chill. I'm like, yo, I need some guidance and counsel. You wanna come over? So, I don't think that's what she wants her for, though. I think she wants her to do other things. Well, because because well, personally, I think that she wants her what other things are. Hard, but... She happens to have some um some vital information. She wants to make sure that. That uh, Tana Merriweather isn't spilling the beans. You know, it's like, hey, I don't want her talking too much because I'm still trying to win this trial. So, hey, Kevin, can you please do me a favor and bring her here so this way I can make sure she doesn't do too much talking? I'm trying to Netflix Netflix and chill some more. I think it's much more simple. I think that Cersei is a selfish bitch. She's always been a selfish bitch. She likes people who who don't go against her, like tell her that she's brilliant, that she's a genius, that she is, you know, whatever. She likes 
the Lakers and Diana Merriweather was someone that was very good. She made her laugh. She gave her all like the little gossipy. She made her feel good about herself, you know, and she, it, so that stopped the loneliness. And I think that Cersei is a selfish person. And I think Diana Merriweather was very good at manipulating and getting her to like her. And I just think it's, I just think that Cersei is selfish. And right now she's surrounded by, you know, good little girls that don't talk to her, don't look at her, that think like she's like the worst of the worst. She's been ashamed. And I think she just wants a bestie that she can talk to and that she can feel great about herself again. Oh, are, are, are you feeling sympathy towards Cersei now, Tinker? No, I just think she's a selfish bitch. <laughs> I didn't mean, hear sympathy for me. <laughs> Personally, I always felt that, I mean, we know that Tyna or no Tyna of Murr was spying for Cersei on Marjorie Tyrell and stuff, but I also, in my heart of hearts, believe that she herself was a double spy and was spying for Cersei <laughs> on Cersei's whereabouts. To oh, you know, maybe someone else. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, she was from Mirror, uh, one of the free cities. You know, we know a certain spider from Lease, but She's also so another smart. Free city. Yeah. Meriwether's so smart. Like, she really is. Like, she got under yeah. Cersei's skin. Yeah. She really did. Always won. Mm hmm. But I oh. like that. I like that. That um, the thought that she could be working with Varys. I like that. That would be really dope. I, I like that too. I, I also like Don Willie's thing where, you know, it, it's kind of like that scene in the casino where they're, you know, discussing about what to do about with that guy. And they're like, yeah, he's a great guy. He's a great guy, but. Why risk it? You know yeah. what I'm talking about. I mean, think about it. You know, she holds her son hostage. She holds Tana hostage. It's like, hey, listen, you start talking. I got your boy. Don't, don't, do, risk anything, it. don't do anything stupid now. Maybe, maybe, stupid. maybe why that's risk? why she asked. Maybe that's why she asked. For her and her son to be brought there because maybe she feels like that um, Tana was really spying on her. Or and if Cersei kills her own son, then Cersei has all the power. Her son couldn't take it away. I'm talking about Tana's type. Oh. Why can't I say this lady's name? Tana Merriweather's son. Tana. That's how I always. I always said Taina. I said Taina because there's all, no why. All I know is if they try pulling the bullshit in the show where Tommen says that they can't have a trial by combat, I'll stop reading the books. <laughs> no, you won't. Uh, I'll, I'll be very pissed. There's only one thing that's going to stop me from reading the books. If, if somebody kills fucking Arya, I'm done. Me too. No, yeah, I'm not I, done. I'll delete, <laughs> not my, done. I, I'll delete my YouTube channel. Don't worry. Like, Arya's going to be I'm like done. Assassin's Creed wrecking shit. At this point, I'm actually terrified that we're never actually going to read one more book. Hey, 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 hey. hey. <laughs> yeah, don't, no, don't no shit, Tinker. I'm in the same boat with you. I said that shit before you got on stream. I was like, fucking, yeah, we only have five books. I was like, cherish them. Hey, like, I, wa hey, I, want to, I want to ask you guys a question because we kind of skipped over it. Okay. okay. Um, Marjorie, she's, uh, she's, she is not a virgin. She it, she was con consultant Grand Maester for Moon Tea. Mm -hmm. Who who was it? Was it Loris? Did did her her and Loris have a relationship like Cersei and Jamie? I think that's oh, yeah. obvious. That's weird. It's it? implied. It's implied. Yeah. I mean, but it's Im it's implied by people who don't like her to begin with. I mean, it's it's one of those things where it's like that's that's really a Cersei. And Tana Merriweather thing where it's like, all right, well, we need to we need to start some kind of rumors about her because we don't have anything on her. And the only thing Cersei could think of was, well, hey, you know what? Yeah, people are talking about me and Jamie, but what if I could turn it and make it the way people are talking about her and Loris? And we all know why oh, Cersei but, would think that that's normal. They examined her, so she's definitely they not a virgin. She's not a virgin. Well, so not definitely be... because because horseback riding can oh, break yeah. the hymen, yeah. and she does do a lot of horseback riding. That's... So it's possible, 
And that's and that's the explanation okay. they give. No, here's here's everybody, everybody that's watching this, everybody in the panel. Like the, this is all of our conspiracies coming together, like in us trying to dissect something that may just not be there. Maybe Marjorie was just a fucking slut. And <laughs> just went around fucking people. I think she was think the about that. For one of her Not one of her that. ladies. Like, I mean, like maybe she just went around and just fucked whoever the fuck she wanted to fuck. Maybe she I, had I a think... nice guy in in, in uh, you know, maybe she had a guy in, in uh, you know, High Garden that you know, they liked being together but they knew they never were gonna he, they knew he never like like kinda like uh Damien Sand and uh what is what is her name? Uh, Ariane. It's kind of maybe they had kind of that relationship, and you know because it's not as open as Dorn, she had to be like, oh, we'll get horseback ready. It just can be something as simple as that. I think she requested a moon tea for one of her ladies. You know, I don't think she. I think she's a virgin. Okay. I do know okay, that it's not Morris. Not... Morris, if there's something that we've seen in the books, is that he was he was really in love with Renly, and that he was really devoted to Renly. Okay, but is being bisexual, like, may, maybe he's bisexual, maybe he's sleeping with him, so wait a minute, you know, what, and what kind also of, what, what with his sister. Like, Lawrence is, a cra- Lawrence is the craziest deviant ever? Like, you, he's gay. He he has sex with his He's incestual. He's like, what? I, I don't think throw that. everything I mean, at him? I mean, the, in Westeros, the incest is a thing it's a that's, thing. That's what I'm it's, saying. It's a yeah. thing. Like Tywin's best cousin. It wasn't I don't among know. the yeah, Targaryens. Like they were, they were banging first cousins. Oh, they do so bang it's, first cousins. It's, it's, it's that's true. It's popular for brother and sister among Targaryens, but I mean, I don't know. I mean, I just first think it's cousins is not considered incest. Incest was considered between brothers, and the only exception were the Targaryens. Everyone else, it was considered I mean, wrong and badly seen. And because uh, was, was he said so? The the thing about the candle, I don't remember the sentence right now. But he he actually seems to be generally mourning, friendly, and in love. I don't see him betraying him by sleeping with the sister. To me, yeah. To me, it's not even about the incest thing. And to me, it's just the fact that I think from a narrative standpoint that they kind of, you know, paired Loris and Renly together. And I, I just don't see it. I, I just don't see that, that, that him and Marjorie were together, but I don't know. Is, but I, I'm kind of with gray. It's, it's implied. It's implied. You know, oh, like in, Cersei? no, um, uh, Marjorie and, and Loris, like you, right. It was just a, a feeling, a feeling I gathered, enemies. you know, by by reading it. The only so it, was, it, was it was it was implied by Cersei, but you also look. They were very close, and they were they had a close relationship, like Cersei and Jamie. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's room there for a situation to and have been it's like nothing that. New. It's nothing new. It's nothing new. It, especially in this world, like great, j- just like you said, like it's it's nothing new, you know. It's no, awesome. I, I think that they were surrounded by enemies. Loras was uh, mourning his beloved. Uh, Margie was marrying a monster. Then a kid, uh, Cersei was going after her, and I think that the Loras was generally worried about Marjorie. They yeah, so he know, went in there and took care of business. And, you know, in families, in, in Westeros, you either kind of dismantle and eventually become, have enemies, or you just become, or you can become very, very close and have each other's backs. And I think that Loris and Marjorie had each other's backs. Since he was gay, I think that Marjorie knew and kept his secret, and it allowed them to have a, a closeness, an ability to talk closer than brother and sister. They're just vicious lies, just like about Anne Boleyn. They were saying that Anne Boleyn was sleeping with her brother, and I think that was a vicious lie and a reason for them to kill her. It's a vicious lie, just like saying uh, Patchface is the, the father of uh, what of uh, Shireen. Yeah. <laughs> but we saw, but we saw that lie concocted. <laughs> <laughs> we saw that lie concocted, and when we're getting Cersei's, when we're getting Cersei's POV. She's not saying these things out loud. These are like internal thoughts that she has. They're not like rumors that she's spreading. These are things that she's thinking to herself, which I always 
I rely more on not what a character says, but what they're thinking, even though she's not reliable. And I'm not saying that it's the case for me, period. Everything in Game of Thrones or a song of ice and fire is a conspiracy theory. So I look at it that way. So <laughs> it, it could go either way. Yeah, yeah exactly. And th- this is why we have these discussions, because, you know, nine times out of ten, there is nothing here in these Game of Thrones books that is fucking cut and dry. George yeah, already admitted that the oh sorry George already admitted the fans are creating a lot of these theories that he didn't even think of a lot of this stuff. Yeah, it's us. It's up. us yeah. fucking over here marinating and like thinking about this shit and like concocting <laughs> all these crazy ideas. He took so much time. He's just he 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 should have just give us another book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's giving us another book. Fire and good. Hashtag, give us another book. Coming out December. Uh, he's, he's too busy tweeting and fucking going doing on Doing wild cards and doing yeah. wild cards. <laughs> yeah. Or, or like, funny like, funny like, 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 There's a journey from him coming out in, in HBO or somewhere else. I'm like, are you kidding me? Book. book. Hey, you book don't do if you're jonesing for George R. R. Martin material, just go read Dream Songs Volume One and Two. It'll, it'll satisfy your needs. I'm telling you. I'm gonna read Duncan Egg or. Uh, I've read that already. <laughs> no, I refuse okay. to buy any more of this books that does not have to do with this series. I'm not giving him one more thing, <laughs> and he gives me everything has to do with the series. Everything comes back. I don't care. It? You would I, love. A, I, a, I'm with Tinker. A, I, I'm with Tinker. I'm on Tinker's side. Yep. I don't. I don't give a shit. I, I don't give a Night shit about Flyers. a single fucking book you write. Like fucking, you need to finish this goddamn series. Night yeah. Flyers is a short, a short story. That's pretty good. And then, you can, and then you can watch it on Sci-Fi when it comes out. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> there's already a version out. It kind of sucks, but there's a version. Yeah, 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 I heard it was pretty bad. I really was a version of Sand Kings that kind of sucks too on the Outer Limits. But we're getting off topic. Yeah, we're getting Billy, way off. Move it on. Woods. Move it on, Willie. Way off into the woods now. All right. Um, moment. All right. So, yeah, we covered all of stuff. So, all right. Um, all right. So, after this, you get the adjournment of small council meeting. And Kevin Lannister decides he wants to go home and warm up or, you know, retire to his study or whatever and warm up. And on the way there, he thinks about the possibility of Lancel becoming a king's guard and thinking to himself that that would be a me- a much better fit for him than him being one of the uh, warrior sons or poor fellows or whatever it is he's involved with with the faith. Uh, and you know what? We can kind of skip over that because who cares about Lancel? Yeah. We already talked about. <laughs> Let's just uh, I, I, hold on, hold on. I think it just, it's, it's a point. Against Kevin Lannister being that smart when he thinks Lancel would make a good King's Guardman, but that's all I have to say about that. He's not thinking about he's not thinking as a regent. He's thinking as a father who doesn't want him involved in all those kind of nonsense. And I also think that fathers sometimes are just are not objective and he's not seeing Lancel and I don't think he's thinking of something like he would be good for that job. More like that job would be good for him. Agreed. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Sometimes even he's uh, not always thinking in best interest of everyone as well. Like no one's perfect. Even, yeah, exactly, exactly. But even Tywin, or Tywin would have known about Cersei and Jaime would have shot him a long time ago. for a long time. But well, that's another cha- that's another chapter. Yeah. When we last see Lancel through Jaime's eye, I don't think he'd make a great king's cousin. <laughs> All right, well, mm-hmm. I don't know why y'all always had extras on to listen. Don't add extras on to my thing, all right, guy? Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> anyway, James hasn't done that in a while. James used to always do that. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, so let's see here. So, uh, he also thinks about how Rhaegar should have, you know, should have uh, married Cersei. And how the realm would probably be in a much better place because he wouldn't have left off with Lyanna Stark. He's like, hey, you know, I guess she was uh, supposedly a, a wild beauty, but nothing compared to my niece. I mean, my niece is the prettiest woman in the entire land, and 
you know. It was the prettiest. And Rhaegar decided to go off with a little wolf girl. Ah, what the hell's wrong with that kid? Come on, after a year stuck with Cersei, he would have run off with anyone. Gone across the sea just to get away from Cersei. Mm-hmm. I disagree. I think Cersei would have had giddy eyes at Rhaegar and did whatever he wanted because Rhaegar was that awesome. <laughs> no, no, no. Cersei would have lasted for a little while being all wide up and then she would have gone all selfish bitch all over him. I mean, well, plus you got to think about it. It's like she probably still would have been sleeping with Jamie. She I, she I don't know. She was so excited about when they mentioned about her possibly marrying him. She was so excited about it. Who knows if like she probably would have put that aside. No, yeah. no. Cersei was in love with an idea of being king and of, of Rhaegar of being like the ideal king, whatever. But we know Rhaegar wasn't perfect. He likes his books more than some people, and he. I don't think he would have liked Cersei. I think anything would have failed compared to her illusion. Eventually, that would have come crashing down, and she would have gone back to Jamie, who she could control, and she felt good about. I agree. She could exactly. control. She she could manipulate Jamie to no end. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not until he burned that letter. <laughs> oh no, man! That 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 pussy has some power, man. Man, you know, Kevin had like a nasty thought about his niece when he was like, "Oh, how pretty she was when she flowered." It was. I was kind of, you know. Well, he knows that he knows about her stuff. Yeah. About what? About he good? knows he knows about her relationship with um, Jamie. So mm-hmm. he knows about Tommen's mm-hmm. true thing. So I don't know, but it's it's a natural thing for your uncle to think that you're beautiful and you're more like and your dad. It like if you have kids, I don't know if any of you had kids, but you think your daughter's always the most beautiful woman in the world. I mean, and to be fair, the, it was also, it's written here, like, described by George as she actually being pretty close to that, so. Yeah. At least at least when she was younger. Yeah, she, yeah. Was, she was pretty. Beauty's just superficial. We already we, we already know that Cersei in the inside is anything but beautiful. And the outside yeah. people exactly. also last for a little while. If you're living with someone constantly, <laughs> eventually, Inner beauty is going to be more important than outside, especially with someone like Cersei that is like complete opposite inside and outside. Rhaegar wouldn't have stand for it, not like what we've seen of Rhaegar. Because Ella was also supposed to be quite beautiful, but that wasn't enough for him. Yeah. Well, well it wasn't, she, she was was enough for him. It as well. It wasn't enough was her ability, the amount of kids he she, Yeah, she, she, she was sick. Yeah. Which makes him an absolute asshole. Correct. Yeah. Why do we know that? Correct. Like, if John ends up being the chosen one that needed to be birthed, he doesn't stop it, him from being an asshole. Yeah, you I don't think, leave your wife because she's sickly and can't give you another kid. I don't no, think you just don't her. do that. Yeah, I don't think he left her because they, they try this bullshit in the show about the annulment, and I, I'm like, I, there's this picture that I love and I admire so much, and it's a picture of Rhaegar hugging Yolanda Elia before he leaves for battle. I think he possibly could have loved both of them. I mean, you could love but, two women, but you take Lyanna Stark and you put her in Dorne in this safe tower so she can birth your son, but you leave your do- he, your he wife know. and kids in King's Landing. So he, 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 left 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 left. he knew his father. He knew his father was crazy. Yeah, but, but he, he still left him in Dragonstone. Like, it was Harris who brought him to the King's uh, Landing. Yeah, yeah. He, he had plans to take out his dad after the war was over. Mm-hmm. Now, his first priority should have been trying to get his wife and his kids somewhere safely. No, his yeah. priority to the and realm. And after the he realm. made sure they were safe, this motherfucker rode out. And was like, I'm gonna win this goddamn war, and then after it's done, I'm taking my dad out. No, no, no. It's, it, hold on. His he, first he priority was to the it. realm. No. If the if he somehow knew that the realm was under duress, if, if he didn't do this, then he did it for the realm. Motherfucker, well, like, no, that's his realm. I I I feel like he's his first duty is not to the realm because it should, it should, it should be to his. Time. It should be to, but he's not king. He's a prince. 
He's he's not the king. It's Ares. Ares's Aries. first duty is to the realm. Rhaegar's exactly. Rhaegar's Rhaegar's first duty is to his family. And you and he he put he he puts the realm. He tries to put the realm in, into perspective and take on the responsibility of the realm when he has Harren Hall. When he when the whole thing that stage at Harren Hall. Very very for the throne though is is uh their duties to the realm. So they're so gonna be if, king eventually. If, I mean okay. that if you're saying that because I'm going to be king or I'm going to be queen that I'm just going to disregard my family I'm not going to do that. For the good of the you room? have to protect you if you look at like the English throne and and things like that you have to protect your line. You have to protect that if something happens to you then your line is who takes over. All if right. you let if you let your line get wiped out and then you die in battle then your whole house is gone it was what, that's and that's, that's what we thought like he he took his wife took her to the tower of joy he rode out in the pursuit to usurp his father yeah he was like okay for, first thing i gotta take care of is my family got him safe just like tinker said and then his next action was let me go to this war and win it and then his third uh, uh he didn't succeed in the second one but his third line of action was after this i'm taking out my fucking dad because he's fucking crazy no that my main problem is that before liana before all of this he should have just taken care of his dad first like, no offense, when there's a crazy... If he really thought that his first duty was to his realm, he should have taken care of the crazy person on the throne. Because you can't start thinking about whether... Oh, you should have just killed him and ended it right there. Or yeah. at least started the plot or start to do something. You can't start thinking, I need to have the third ki uh, kid that is going to then to save this whole disaster, whatever. It doesn't matter if he really thought those crazy thoughts. And even if it turns out they're not crazy and then John really is the prince that is coming, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when you are not king and you're not able to then deal with all the shit that's going to cause. There's a crazy person in the throne. That is already paranoid about you, about everything that is going. Anything that you do of these kind of acts is going to send him in a tailspin that we've already seen, that we already know happened. The first priority is to take care of the person that you can't control, that is already oh, crazy, that is doing crazy stuff. You deal with him. You How do we know he wasn't? Order, and then you start putting your plans in action. You can't oh, expect to do something like Take Lyanna Lannister, who is promised to one of your greatest lords, to the daughter of one of your other greatest lords, with your father, who is crazy ass bonkers on the throne, and not expect for shit to hit the fan. It's just stupid. Hold, yeah. hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. How do we know he was not already planning it? Like, because they were, you can't just say, oh, take no, it. No, no, That's not, he hold, 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 not an he, easy he, thing to do. It's not easy just to remove Eris because you want to. He well, had to. Wait, you can start of... doing all the other crazy stuff while you have a crazy person in the throne. He would have needed to do a coup. He would have needed to do a real coup and have everybody support him because if he didn't, it. and if he didn't do the coup, he would have got crushed because that's what happens when you try and do a coup. Even if you're the prince, if you try and do a coup and you fail, you all die. So he exactly. had to have it, it, all the support. Exactly, Rhaegar, and there's evidence that he was trying to do a coup, like he had years a coup years in the planning. But it was, but it was blew up. But it was blew up by Varys. But if if Rhaegar had a went to Tywin, if Rhaegar had a went himself to Tywin, Tywin would have been Team Targaryen, Team Rhaegar Targaryen. Oh, definitely, most yeah, hundred percent. That's true. So his Probably. so Rhaegar. I think Rhaegar, like I think he's. We don't have a POV from Rhaegar, and we don't know what he was thinking, but. I think he just made bad decisions, and I think a lot of his decisions were made off of emotion and not and it's good, it's smart. Good that he made those bad decisions because we get the story that we got. He was getting them <laughs> sweet walls, and he, <laughs> his mind got clouded. I mean, I've always thought that Rhaegar, I mean, one, that's not an easy thing to see. Like, uh, what's his name? Ares wasn't a bad king until, like, later in his life. So once he started being a bad king, you know, we saw that there was southern ambitions that started coming together. 
and that was a a long year, uh, like years of planning that that was happen. And we kind of can figure that Rhaegar was part of it because when they went to all go meet at the tourney of Heron Hall, he was telling Jamie things are going to be or no. Eventually, he when he left for the Trident. Yeah, yeah. he's going to say things are going to be different. So he had been planning this for a long time, and he'd been planning it carefully. He he did get sidetracked from this whole reading the prophecy and figuring out how he needs to birth the three sons, which we don't know if he needed to or not. We'll find that out in the later books, how important that prophecy was. But if that prophecy was as important as we are, he might have just had to prioritize it over his, you know, the overtake, like doing the coup. So, and Ellie suspected it. I, I think he kind of got sidetracked with prophecy. And I think he also got kind of sidetracked with, I believe this is not canon. This is just a theory, but I believe that he actually was going to summer hall. And I think that the ghost of high heart was at summer hall. And there's a lot of things in the text that connect, that connect those two at summer hall. And, um, he would come back with songs on his harp about dead Kings. So I, I think that she was feeding him her dreams and we know that her, her dreams aren't literal. Her dreams are like, um, I don't know what's the word, but her dreams need to be, yeah, they need to be interpreted. So I just think that he was kind of caught up in that and not really worrying about the big picture. Well, well what is the big, hold on, hold on, but what is the big picture? I mean, if, if, if the prophecy has anything to do with the, the others that are going to be coming down, I would say that's a bigger picture than the Game of Thrones. It's a, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's the bigger picture for winter, but then it was summer. Hey, you got to plan ahead. You can't get, that's how you get caught slipping. Yeah, you plan it, <laughs> you can plan ahead, but not like 20 years ahead. Like, you, you, like we'll five see. years ahead. We'll see. I mean, I still, he, no, go ahead, finish. He still had time, like, to he could have, like, just reversed the chronicle of the way that he did things. Like, he still had time if he thought that he needed Liana. He still had time to go handle, handle his dad, squash out any kind of rebellion, and then go in honor and talk with the Starks, talk with Robert Baratheon. And try to work something out. Hindsight's always twenty twenty, though. I mean, like, yeah, everyone, I think, could have done better at something at some point. Given the information that we have, it's possible he might not have been that bad of making decisions. Like, well, uh, listen, folks, as, but we're getting off, as, as no. much as I would like to keep this going, we have gotten far deep off. Yeah, let's we, move on we to are the no next. longer on the King's Road <laughs> at this point. Yes. <laughs> You know, we we kind of need to get back on on track here. Yes. Um, oh man, like who 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 knew that you know just asking about whether or not Cersei was pretty could turn into all of this. But, um, <laughs> my bad, my bad. <laughs> nah, hey, it is what it is. It's everybody's at fault. Let's just move on to. The- it's happened to us in every single reread. <laughs> we we should just change our name from the Hype Watch to the to the Rabbit wa- Rabbit Hole Watch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Okay, so, uh, oh, all right. So Kevin also informs uh, Cersei that the remaining Cattle Black Brothers have been arrested for confessing. Well, not confessing. They've been arrested because she confessed to sleeping with the Cattle Blacks. Mm -hmm. Uh, So basically, if they both confess to actually sleeping with the Queen then they will be sent to the wall. If not, they will have to face Robert Strong in trial by combat. And I don't think it's two against one. Yeah, but I don't think think we care about this. Do we? Anybody actually care about this? I I mean, well, if they go to the wall, if they go to the wall, then Cersei got what she wanted. Well, yeah, because (laughs) she wanted them to go to the wall to kill Jon Snow, but Jon Snow is dead anyway. So, I mean, it's not... As we came to the conclusion last week, he deserved it. I think it would be pretty cool to see a small scene of the mountain destroying them too before we see Cersei's trial at combat. That would be pretty cool. That would be. I'd like to see it. Yeah, that would be cool. 
And well, the question is, will it be two on one or will it be one and then the other? <laughs> they probably make it two on one just because you know of size, and then it'd be like a thing where he winds up destroying <laughs> both of them. Oh, how can he be stalked? No, no, no. <laughs> no what's wanna... going to happen is they're going to come in, and the mountain is going to go into the crowd and pick a little kid out of the crowd to be his tag team partner, and that's all it's going to happen. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see here. All right, so here's uh, here's where we come down to the wire on this one. So we have a messenger come to uh, Kevin Lannister and say, hey, Grand Maester Pycelle is asking for your presence in his chambers. Kevin, you know, goes out in the snow and he's thinking about how damn cold it is. He finally gets to Maester Pycelle's chamber. Well, before he gets there, you know, he sees a little girl who who's there. He takes off his cloak and is like, hey, I'm here to see Maester Pycelle. And she got scared. And she just points in his direction. Um, He goes inside and is like, damn, it's cold as hell in here. Pycelle, what the hell are you doing? And he sees, you know, there's a white raven sitting on the ledge of, of the window and he's thinking to himself like that is the biggest bird I've ever seen. Bigger than any raven, bigger than any falcon, bigger than any hawk, you know, super huge. And he knows that winter is finally here. So he kind of tries to shoo the bird and close the window. But as soon as he turns around, boom, right in his chest, he gets an not an arrow, but uh, RKO okay, out of nowhere. Yeah, crossbow bolt. Mm-hmm. I was about to say scorpion bolt. I'm like, no, the, he probably would have got blown out the window if he got hit in the chest <laughs> with scorpion bolt. Um, <laughs> so yeah, he gets hit in the chest with the crossbow bolt, and he's thinking to himself, "Hey, this is the way my brother died. I don't want to die like this." And he thinks at first that Tyrion has come to kill him. Until Varys the Spider steps out of the shadows and is like, hey. It's me, Austin! Listen, bro. Um, you've been doing good work. And that's why I gotta kill you. Because, you know, um, things are actually starting to be peaceful. And I need things to be all kinds of fucked up. So that people will rally to Aegon's cause once he takes over uh, at Storm's End. And... Kevin is thinking to himself, like, hey, wait, hold on. Is very serious with this right now? No, I saw that kid bashed. You know, there was nothing left except for some hair, and they wrapped him up in the Lannister cloak so that you wouldn't be, basically, you wouldn't be able to tell where where the cloak ended and the blood began. And Varys is like, nope, he's actually been training all this time he you know he's uh studied with uh scepters and maesters and he's washed his you know own what clothes. it's like to be hungry yeah he's washed his Doesn't own clothes hide. he's had to catch his own food he knows how to stitch up wounds you know he's he's been through all of the rugged stuff and he knows that being a king and ruling the people well is his duty and it's not just a right that he was born with and that's why people are going to flock to his banners once he comes here and hey listen you know this is not what i wanted for you but somebody had to do it oh and yeah don't worry everything's going to be screwed up because cersei is going to think that the tyrells did it tyrells are going to blame cersei and someone somewhere is going to find a way to blame the dornish this even though Dornish absolutely had nothing to do with this at all but you know listen thank you for your service Kevin Lannister you surely will be missed and then he uh, whistles to one of the kids and starts seeing the kids pop up and in their hands the daggers then the cycle music starts playing <laughs> Can I just say, I think it's the, um, this chapter, this chapter, this ending of this chapter is 
shed the most uh, light on Aegon actually being Aegon, and also sheds the most light on Varys not truly being in service to the realm. Well, True. you know, I was, I mean, True. I wanted to. True. Uh, I was going to say, because, you know, I always thought, I always believed that, that Varys having this ending soliloquy here and saying that Aegon is alive, it really meant that Aegon, that Aegon was Aegon, but. I would say this. I, I, me personally, I believe that it doesn't ultimately matter if he's Aegon or Phaegon. He's a symbol of of change and 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 stuff like that. I, I'll I'll, I'll think because you know there's no Mori. You can't go get your DNA tested. So it doesn't ultimately yeah. it doesn't even you matter. You are if he's not Aegon the not. father. But <laughs> and I I always said to myself, why would Varys tell a lie to a dying man? Um, but. I, when I scour through the text here, he doesn't actually explicitly, he doesn't say that, you know, I took Aegon the baby and set him free. You know, he, did, he didn't say that. So I think he's still referring to the symbolism of, of Aegon itself as just being the son of Rhaegar and being a true heir. He's not saying that, you know, that this is actually that kid that came out alive. So ultimately, I don't think it really matters. I still don't really think that it's really Aegon. I just think that it's a symbol and that it's not explicitly stated that it's actually him. You know, um, I think you may, you put it down perfectly, James. And this right here, just what, what Varys says about this character, A being Aegon or Phaegon, makes me love this guy. I If I was some soldier in Westeros and I heard about all this, what he's done and how he could hunt, how he's, you know, he, he it's, his, it's not his right, I would rally my sword right for him. And, you know, I, I just, that's why I'm, I'm so excited to see what this character is and what, is, what he's going to be, you know. And I know this is probably like a 0% chance of happening, but if he was really Aegon, I think it would be awesome if John is John is a Targaryen and like they are the three heads of the dragon. It's probably not going to happen, but that, I think that would be awesome. So LT just admitted that he's a turncloak. Um, I, I, so I'm told, like, I believe that Aegon is a black fire. That, that's what I believe. But this chapter is kind of hard to explain why he's lying to a dead man. But you do see that Varys is not in service to the realm because if he was, he would not have killed Kevin because he just explains on how much stuff Kevin is doing that's good, that's actually good for the realm. But because it's not who he wants to be king, he goes ahead and just kills him anyway. Because he doesn't want House Lannister in power. I disagree. I, I think that while Kevin is trying to put, you know, some things to right, I think that Barrys think that the Lannisters and that system overall does not help the poor people. That it's a system that helps the rich. We already know that Barrys was he doesn't come from a, a noble family he comes from the poor to the poor that has kind of raised ri himself i kind of think this shows really various intentions i think that what he wants is a, it's a change of the system to bring someone who who has grown up differently who has grown up uh, in in between normal people who was taught from them who has learned from them who knows them and who will eventually when he comes to the throne he will treat you know, the lower class better. I think that he believes that Kevin Lannister is a good person, but that right now is kind of keeping, you know, this failings and unjust system, you know, kind of like working. I think what he wants is for everything to just collapse on itself so that when they come, they can, they can redo it into something that he believes is going to be better. You know, it's kind of like Kevin right now is like helping like the bad people kind of like stay there and just kind of like keeping like a stability, but not not a good stability overall for the people. You know, the 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 the, the Boltons will, would be in charge of the North if it was up to Kevin. Uh, things would still kind of be like the status quo would remain, and I don't think he believes that status quo is is good. At least that's. That's kind of like what I got from his message. And I think that he just kind of wants to do out with all of these kind of selfish people and try to build something new. And 
that's that's but what they, they actually don't know where um, Varys comes from, and there's actually a lot of evidence pointing that he himself is a black fire. Maybe not not as high as rank as a uh, Bagon, but he himself is a black fire, and that's why he shaves his head to hide his silver hair. Um, that's how he and Alario came to be. That's why his blood was important. That well, he got castrated because it would technically have some king blood. Yes, but he hasn't been born in a castle in West. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. The, well, the Blackfires have been, yeah. No, yeah, no, well, if if, he, if if he's a Blackfire, he's an exile. But Varys has been doing. He's been doing this dance for a long time. He it's it said that the Mad King didn't fully go mad until Varys started whispering in his ear. And then if you really want the realm to be better, you have a mad king, why do you tell him that your son, that that, that Rhaegar is planning a coup? Why tell him that? If you are well, if you really want the realm to be a better place. He might be thinking the realm in a better place on a, on a long scale, like generational scale, than, you know, just a, you know, five, ten year scale. But at this so, point, but at this point, Aegon's not even born. No, he's, he's born. He's, no. He's pro- Fagon is probably, well, one, Fagon's probably not the exact same age as what baby Aegon was. He, he was probably, well, but then again, you're right, because when he came in, he would have been, hmm. He's older than John, right? By a year or two? Yeah. He'd, he'd be older like, than not, not even a year, I don't think. Well, no, maybe I think more than a year, he was a baby. Of actually putting a fig on, just getting a, a black fire under the name of black fire. I'm guessing that Varys, I, I'm getting the, I get the idea that Varys is very adaptable and that he kind of has like a very, a long-term idea, but then he changes the exact, you know, idea, you know, the exact image of that final idea, depending on how things go, because not everything is predictable. So maybe he just had the idea of bringing a black fire rebellion, and then when this whole thing happened, he thought, huh, maybe it'd be easier if I could just put it under the banner of a, the, a proper Targaryen. And, and also, he might just be thinking, like, he might just be drinking the black fire Kool-Aid and be like, the black fires are a better family, better... The, They'd be better for the realm long term. I mean, that's what that, that that's been sometimes their uh, what do you call it their stance and things. Um, yeah. Well, some of their rebellions. So if I if I may real quick two two points about this whole thing. Um, a, you know, this does seem to be like a secret black fire rebellion because you know the last five were very overt. So this one could be, you know, Varys using his mummer's tricks in order to get a secret Blackfire rebellion to which, you know, uh, when the Blackfire sword is revealed, uh, once Aegon cements his claim on the throne, he could, you know, uh, he could tell him like, hey, you know what? Uh, You should change your name to Blackfire since you have the sword, right? Um, and the other thing, uh, when it comes to, to this whole thing, I think no matter what Varys was trying to position for there to be a black fire on the throne, regardless, no matter what happened, uh, he was going to find some way to put a black fire on the throne. Uh, and, yeah. and real quick, one other point that I, that I almost forgot Anybody else recognize that a lot of this stuff parallels Duncan? I was just about, I was yeah. just about to bring that up. That's why you got to read Duncan Egg to understand the main series. Otherwise, yeah. you'll miss out things like this. He's pretty much described Aegon, Aegon V, which um, yeah, wow. Wow, that, I mean, and, I, and I yeah, and I feel like he could have done anything. He could like for a prequel, he could have wrote about anything. But the Blackfire Rebellion is talked about so much. The original Blackfire Rebellion is talked about so much in Duncan Egg. And also you have the whole like a, another Blackfire Rebellion in the books, in the the Tales of Duncan Eggs. So he could have talked about anything. So the fact that he felt like he needed to highlight that outside of his five books that he's Look, already written, I think it's important. When George writes these side things, they are always like if you look at when their release dates are, they come out 
with importance of almost the next book. Like we're so you know what we, they needed to start building the black fires. That's when he brought uh, you know the black fires and start. Or actually, he first brought the hedge knight when he needed to describe what it would be because we had a lot of. I think it was just Clash of Kings and then Game of Thrones, or mainly just Game of Thrones. So we saw a lot of that everyone was a hustler, that knights are a bunch of, uh, the knights we were seeing in the stories are, none of them are really all that great. Even the guys that we think are great aren't really all that great. Yet then he introduces us someone who actually shows what it means to be a knight. And then, you know, later we get the Blackfires and then, um, you know, we get the mystery knight, which really introduces us more to Bloodraven right before a dance of dragons, which will give, you know, uh, Bloodraven reveal. Um, that's why I think Princess of the Queen, a lot of what's in that we're going to see, uh, have effect in, uh, it's going to hint to a lot what's going to happen in the winter winter. So. I have a question for everyone. And this is something that hit me the first time I read Death of Dragons. Um, where does everybody think Varys was hiding? I mean, the last we see him is a storm of swords and then we don't know. Where does everybody think he was hiding this whole time? Because they checked That's his quarters and he wasn't there. I want to hear everybody's opinion on it. In the so, Red Keep, in the tunnels and stuff. The sewers. He could have been hiding in the open. He was that good at disguise. Yeah, because yeah, I think, yeah, he was really good at disguise. Yeah, yeah he could change his look, change his voice. Oh, yeah, because I mean, all these shows And, and his them. smell, and his smell. Like, he could change his, he could look like a woman. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, Master of this guy. He might have been hanging out at the uh, the mouth of the Mandor, or maybe even uh, White Harbor with the Mandor League, because you know he's a mermaid. Varys, <laughs> Varys the faceless, faceless man confirmed. But we, I think, I like we, what you did there, Jerry. I think we do know that there is a, at least a black fire. It's it. There has to be a black fire in the game. I pretty much. I mean, it, it, I, I think this pretty much. Conf- I mean, I believe that it, big guns a black fire. As much as I believe in R plus L equals J, it's that strong. Um, like Varys is like in Alaria, what they're doing really doesn't make sense if if he's not a Blackfire. Like yeah. if he is, everything everything fits in like the puzzle perfectly. Um, if like all of a sudden he gets on Team Danny, or all of a sudden out of nowhere. <laughs> and it also makes sense why he would use Aegon Fifth to oppose. Because uh, in my opinion, even though Jaharis had the is considered the best king. He's considered the best king to the nobles. In my opinion, the best king was Aegon the Fifth because he would give a lot of. He he was trying to transfer a lot of the powers from the nobles to the four pe- to the you know the common people, and that's why he was getting so much crap and why he felt he needed dragons. He needed to strong arm people into thinking that the nobles into thinking that this was right. Um, so, and that kind of goes. And the one who the one who undid a lot of uh, what all, all the laws that Aegon we don't know the exact laws because George never said but there were some laws that were undone by Tywin and we know Kevin thinks like Tywin so you know they're kind of like in direct opposition of each other in their ideologies. Well, so, you know I'm I'm 20. still waiting on Jerry's fucking first YouTube video. I'm still waiting on it. <laughs> I'm you know, you know what's on. funny though. Uh, you know, like uh, so so when it comes to Aegon the Fifth, uh, he was kind of like Bane, you know, because uh, oh. he he wanted to take the power and give it back to you, the people. Oh. <laughs> he was Bernie. He was he was people. Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders of Westeros. Yeah, right and everyone opposed him. Like Bernie Sanders, he he got Hillary, but. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have another question for everybody. So, what happens if Fagon Aegon finds out somehow from Illyrio and and Varys that his whole life is a lie that he isn't the Aegon that he's a fake? Depends that on where he finds that out. Does he die as? Do you think? Do you think that he could be like pissed off? You know, what I mean, I, I think I don't think he'll ever find out. Hair. I think if they if he found out that they would like tell him like, look, it doesn't matter what your blood is. You need to be a symbol for the people. So suck it up and do what you were taught. That's well, I, think, that's I, I think John Co. actually thinks he's Aegon. Well, oh, John Coe. Yeah, yeah, well, remember, there, there, there is oh, the yeah. line, there is the line uh, earlier from uh, Illyrio, red or black, a dragon is a dragon. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's Varys. I think it's Varys that's the dragon. 
that's the black dragon. Oh, come on. No. Look at his name. Varys, Aeris, Daenerys, Viserys, Ares, Jaharis, Luteris. Come oh, no. on. Look at his name. And then no. Makoro, Makoro tells Tyrion, um, Tyrion asks him, what do you see in the flames? He says, I see dragon, old and young, dark and bright, dark and bright, red and black. Um, and you, a <sighs> And that cast a big shadow standing in the midst of all of them. Who else tells Tyrion that he's a small man that casts a big shadow? Varys. Indeed. Also, are we talking about what Ricky Hunt just said in the chat about how he's saying that Aegon versus Daenerys is going to be the second dance of the dragons while uh, with Aegon getting control of Rhaegal <laughs> and being the green versus the black? If, no, be, if because Aegon tries to get control of Rhaegal, Rhaegal is going to eat his ass alive. Yeah, I mean, but I think it will be a dance of the dragons thing, dude. And I think if he's a Targaryen, there's no fucking way that he has the the fortitude to be part of a dance of dragons. Like he could tame, he could tame Rhaegal. Yeah, I mean, he's he a, he's a dragon. He could probably tame. No, he, he he cannot. He cannot tame. Wait, why wouldn't he, he be able to tame? Tame, tame? I don't. Think, I don't think he can because I don't think he's a Blackfire. I think he's the Tanner son. He was <laughs> the Tanner son was really taken from Third Landing. When Varys Varys is the black fire. When Varys saw that Aegon's face was so ruined, he took a boy from King's Landing and sent him across the narrow sea to become Aegon. The best lies have a little bit of truth. But why does I mean, the Tanner have silver hair? Because yeah, maybe, maybe, he, maybe his mother banged a waters or something. Oh, I mean, remember too. Why doesn't John have silver hair? Well, I, mean, well, I, I have a theory. They don't have silver hair. I, ha I have died. a theory about uh, about when it comes to uh, strong leadership, uh, and, and you know, it it doesn't make sense genetically. But if you're thinking about, I guess, strong-willed characters, I think the reason why John doesn't have silver hair is because. The more dominant out of that relationship was Leanna, um, so that that's my theory on on that one with Jon Snow's uh, Jon Snow's looks. But um, yeah, no, I, I'm not dis I'm not disagreeing with that. What I'm saying is there are people in King's Landing that have silver hair. We see Arain Waters on the small council meeting. He has purple hair. There are there are people in King's Landing with Valyrian descent, and the Yo, Tanner's and son could have been one of them. Don't don't forget, like the Targaryens are not the only ones that fled the the fires. Of right, Valeria. we have the Valerians as well. Yeah, you know, and there's and the, the people from Leeds. Yeah, you know, we have the possibility of uh, of the Danes as well. Because it's funny, uh, we we get a description of the Danes all having purple eyes. But the only person whose hair we've actually uh, seen is Dark Star. So we don't. No, we he don't he know. just had a streak. He just had a streak in his hair. Right. But what I'm saying. Is, but no. But what I'm saying is, we don't know fully what Arthur Dane looked like, other than he had purple eyes, and we don't know what Ashara Dane looked like, other than the fact that she had purple eyes. So they yeah. could have had black hair, brown hair, pink hair. Who knows? We we haven't gotten. A full description of them yet dude you're you're the one that did the valerian video like there's i mean there's there's right. so many different houses that that fled you know from valeria right I yeah know. Was, I know. remember gray you don't oh sorry what I was gonna say, here's, the, here's the thing though even if he's a bastard of of uh either targaryen blackfire or uh or what or uh valerian even if he's a bastard, he would still be able to tame a dragon, as we've seen bastards. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, you can you can tame a dragon if you have blood. I don't even think you have to have that blood, but I'm not even gonna go get into that rabbit hole. No, but but Quentin Quentin had Targaryen blood, and he couldn't he couldn't tame them. I I really think that, I really think that Euron is gonna get a dragon. 
And the Night King is going to get a dragon. And Daenerys will have a dragon. Euron is not going to get a dragon. And I, I like how you said that, how fucking Teflon just showed up in the chat again. <laughs> Euron will not get a dragon and fly to Casterly Rock. I swear to God. <laughs> I don't if think... I ever hear that come out of his mouth again, like, I'm fucking, dude. I don't every think time that, he but... says that shit, it fucking boils my blood. Like, no, that is not I happening. It doesn't happen either because I hate Euron Greyjoy with a passion of a thousand times. <laughs> why, <laughs> give, why, why give Big Perry on this, um, this horn? Why give him this dragon horn? To take over to Daenerys and then Makoro explaining to him how to use it. I don't and all think it's stuff. real. If, I, I I don't think it's real. No, I you don't think, think that horn? I think it's real. I think mm-hmm. it's a real dragon horn. I think it was a thing of. I do yeah, too. I'm I'm giving yeah, my too. brother. I'm giving my idiot brother this horn, and letting him think that he could possibly take over the dragon. It's not even real. I've I've bound it to myself <laughs> already. Sorry, Kraken. And, you're gonna find out. And when the horn gets fi- blown. The dragon is going to go right past Victorian. Uh, no, he's going to roast him on fire. Uh, <laughs> run, fly past him and go straight to Euron. Well, Victorian, Victorian can't blow the horn. Whoever blows the horn dies, so he's going to have to right. like, claim it with fire and blood. So I don't know how he's going to Right, All right. Now, now y'all are getting under my skin. <laughs> we are. We are. Sorry. We are, we are ending. Great joys, right? <laughs> That, I mean, that I, I'm a supporter. Nothing to do with this chapter. Yeah, I, I'm. Yeah, a, let's, let's go back to this. Let's let's go back to it. Yeah, like, let's not go into the great jury discussion. <laughs> yeah, listen, look, look, people, people. people we'll we'll next week, we're, folks. We're, we're, <laughs> I wanted to add more about this, though, about what Ricky Hunt said about this. Like, I don't think he's gonna get it, even though he could technically get a dragon. But that's a great point. I think that Ricky Hunt meant that it's uh um, it could be a dance of you know a dance of dragon, like another Blackfire dance of dragons kind of. Thing because awesome. what came out, what novella came out after Winds of Winter? Princess of the Queen and Rogue Prince. Yep. There you go. Well, look before we know, know, like, look, we're, we're, starting, come up. we're starting to get deep into the woods again. Yeah. And I, I do know that we have two people on the panel who who do need to kind of uh, <laughs> get out of here. We don't want to be. Bounce. We don't yeah. want to monopolize their time. So, uh, yeah, look, if anything, I think we should probably set up a discussion and we'll call it Who Will Get a Dragon? Dude, <laughs> right. I'm down. I'm down. Who, the hell sign me up? Who will get a dragon? Sign me up, dude. All right, so. How, 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 how to steal and train your dragons. Be the <laughs> Shut so, up, Jerry. <laughs> all right, so, uh, yeah, look, this was this was a great one, as always. Uh, we so happy to have the yes. band back together in a major way, and and definitely so happy to have Gray Area on here. Uh, Gray, you know, plug plug yourself for the people who you know pretty much already know you anyway. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. <laughs> tell them. Tell them. Thanks for having me on. Um, you can check out my channel. Um, the channel is Gray Area. And if you want to know why I think Varys is Blackfire, I have a whole, I have two 30 minute videos on the Black Dragon conspiracy. And I was so happy that you guys called me for this chapter. Yeah, we're, we're happy. Just to have saying. Uh, link <laughs> is in the description. So make sure to subscribe to Gray Area if you have not done so already. Next up, Lady Tinker. Uh, tell the people what you're up to and uh, where they can find you. Ah, oh, it was so great to be back to reread. I had so much fun. I loved it. I really hope that uh, I'm. I do not miss the next one because it's just so great to be back. I had so much fun, and I'm sure you know me. I'm Tinker Jasa. I'm in my channel. I do reactions. Uh, and reviews of the episodes when they come, which is, are not coming until next year. I cannot believe that they're taking so bloody long for the next season. And God knows when the next book's coming out. That's going to be even longer. But anyway. So now next week. Thank you very much, uh, you guys, for watching us live or later. And I had a lot of fun. All right. Oh, hold on. on. Now, Willie. Yeah, what's going before, on? Before everyone goes, I want to just get a quick answer. Did Kevin deserve to die? 
Yes or no? Yes, no, he deserves to die, and I hope he burns in hell. <laughs> no. No from Gray Area? LT? No. No, no, no from James Kraken? I'm with I'm with Willie on this one. Yes, he, he's a Lannister. He yeah. all Lannisters deserve to oh, die. Yeah. yeah. Tinker? He needed, he needed to go. I'm sorry, I'm I I you know, he was a decent Lannister, but the Lannisters have to go down and while he's there, I'm I'm you know, I'm with Varys. He's keeping things stable and things need to crash and burn from some for someone else to come in and put things back in track. So sorry. <laughs> They deserve to die according to Tinker, even though good men deserve to die according to Tinker. Okay. Um. <laughs> well, he supported his father, and he's supporting all of this. Here we go again. Uh, sure. Because he knows Tommen is an illegitimate, so let's not get into the conversation. We're, we're, we're sort of closing, and I actually need to leave. Yeah. I, I'm going to say... From this evidence, he doesn't deserve to die, but I have a feeling there's e- mountains of evidence saying that he does. So, uh, there you go. All right. Kraken, you're up. Um, guys, um, I, I'm going to tinker on this one. Um, it, it was so much fun to be back, you know, like, and, and just talk with you guys. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of people that I hang out um with in my life but nobody has read these books and nobody is as passionate about it as i am you know and it's it's just it's so nice to to talk to you guys and and have everyone comment in the chat room and you know like uh, all the comments that that we're gonna get like i'm gonna read through every single one of them you know it's it's just it's wonderful it makes me feel good i get excited about it you know, and I, I'm just really happy to be here. Uh, I thanks you guys. Like I, I, I love y'all. Like y'all, y'all are some of my best friends. You know, you really are. But I'm done cracking wit. I'm out. It's good having you back. Yeah. Yeah. Good you Thank back. you. Thank you. JB, JB, you're rep. Uh, um, first off, keep an eye on the Hypes Watch Twitter to uh, vote for next month's chapter. We'll put a vote up there and. You guys can choose a chapter. Don't choose LT's chapter three months in a row, please. <laughs> three months in a row? Yes. Theon 6. I'm just going to say Theon 6 of Clash, Clash of Kings. Just put it up. Anyway, um, I uh, also, on my channel, I put out a video the other day for the first time in 10 months. Um, <laughs> I started writing a fantasy novel, and I put out the first two Sorry. chapters. I would, yes. you know, if you guys want to check it out and, and give it a feedback, that'd be cool. Uh, on his channel. On, 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 his on my channel. channel. Mm-hmm. JBTV, but um, yeah, oh, JB now. that's about it. And it was fun. It yeah. was fun as always. Uh, link will be in the description. I, I, James, I actually thought you weren't gonna be here today, so my bad about that one. But I, I will make sure to put your link in the description. So make sure to subscribe to JBTV. Next Absolutely. up, sure LT Giles. Gray area, thank you so much for joining us. It's yes, a thank you, Gray. Um, I will be returning with my series Story Time LT. It's been too long. I haven't done one in a long time. I got I got some stories to do. And um, look for my movie. I'm gonna start doing movie, movie reviews more because I've been going to the movies a lot more. I might be reviewing the movie A Quiet Place really soon. What about your but, um, dreams, dude? That that like your... that's so maybe you know I did have a weird dream last night. I, yeah, LT's dream journal might be back too. Thanks for reminding me, Kraken. But yeah. now, uh, thank you everybody in the chat for joining us. It's just always a pleasure to see Kraken again and Tinker. LT out. All right. LT, LT's like drunk Prince Darren Targaryen. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Jerry hates D and D steamboat. <laughs> <laughs> all right i guess you're signing up with me uh yeah thanks everyone for joining thanks for great thanks for watching thanks for for joining us and having this discussion uh yeah be sure to vote uh for next week's chapter i mean in the last week we talked about how john deserved it now we talked about how kevin might have deserved it and well next week we'll probably talk about how uh little finger deserves to uh rule the realm Let's go. Follow it on Twitter and Hashtag vote for the next life. chapter that you want.
Yeah, don't Kevin, forget the Kevin Lannister the, didn't deserve to die. Leave Kevin Lannister alone. <laughs> he deserved to die. He was, hey, he was if you decided that John deserves to die, Kevin da- Lannister definitely deserves to die. <laughs> I didn't decide that. I didn't decide <laughs> that. Oh, no, to I wasn't here. Oh, okay. We decided the hype box to say. No, no, part of the hype watch decided. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, and I am <laughs> too much the fun. too much fun over here. I am uh, the disembodied voice of Don Willie, that you can't see my damn face. Anyway, listen, uh, thank you guys for coming. You know, I'll uh, I'm trying to get back to doing my regular live streams. I bought a new damn computer, and the shit don't work, which is why we're sitting here with four squares on Skype. Anyway, um, yeah, so. Look, you guys already know, look out for uh, Ice and Fire opinions. And I think I'm going to start doing some uh, Westworld reviews because Westworld is awesome. All right. Don't Yay! forget to vote on awesome. Twitter for the next chapter. And also look out for when we're going to be doing Who's Going to Get a Dragon on the Ice Watch <laughs> channel. All right. How to tame a dragon up, bro. by the hype Hype me up. So. With that being said, uh, my name is Don Willie for the Hype Swatch. Remember to rate, comment, subscribe, share, tell your friends, and come back for more. We are the Hype Swatch, and that has been our time. This is Don Willie saying, Vala Dohiris, we will see you soon. Farewell, and good luck, and good night. Leroy <laughs> Jenkins! Jenkins. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, no.